One Piece. Story was made by Aichiro Oda. The East Blue Saga, Orange Town. The sun cast its golden rays upon the vast expanse of the tranquil sea, its surface as flat and still as a polished mirror. A gentle breeze whispered through the air, carrying with it the faint cries of seagulls soaring overhead. The pirates, Luffy and Zoro, sailed upon these serene waters in a small boat, their vessel rocking ever so slightly with each undulating wave. As the seagulls darted past them, their wings brushing against the pirates' weathered clothes, Luffy let out a discontented grumble. I'm so hungry, he complained, his stomach growling like a caged beast. Zoro couldn't help but remark, it's weird that you have absolutely no navigation skills. Sitting down at the bow of the boat, Luffy turned to face Zoro, a mischievous glint in his eyes. Why? I've always been just wandering, he asked, his voice devoid of concern. You're like me too, wandering and capturing wanted pirates for rewards. Zoro, his hand pressed against his face, sighed deeply. I don't remember me saying that I live completely off of rewards, he confessed wearily. I was searching for a man, that's why I left to the sea. But now I can't find my way home. I had no choice but to start hunting pirates for a living, just to get a little bit for the living expenses. Luffy gazed at Zoro, his expression unwavering. Oh, so you're lost, he quipped, a hint of amusement dancing in his voice. Zoro's retort came like a thunderclap. Shut up! You are the one who's lost! His outburst subsided into resignation as he continued. Geez, never heard of pirates who don't know how to navigate. How do you expect to go to the Grand Line like this? You should hurry and find a crewmate who knows how to navigate. Counting his fingers with childlike enthusiasm, Luffy beamed with excitement. And someone who knows how to cook, and someone for singing, and... He trailed off, lost in his fantasies. Zoro couldn't help but bark at him. Idiot! What are you going off on? Time passed, and the two pirates found themselves lying on their backs on the boat, their arms spread wide. Their hunger gnawed at them mercilessly, and their voices merged in a shared sentiment. So hungry. As if in response to their desperate pleas, a bird flew from the azure sky, catching both Luffy's and Zoro's attention in the far distance. Oh, a bird! Zoro exclaimed, his eyes gleaming with hunger. Luffy, his gaze fixed upon the avian creature, added with a playful grin, looks pretty tasty. Driven by their ravenous appetites, a plan formed in Luffy's mind, he proclaimed to Zoro, let's eat that bird. Zoro, bemused yet skeptical, couldn't help but question, how are you going to eat it? Luffy, brimming with confidence, responded with pride, I'll go get it, watch my specialty. In a remarkable display of elasticity, he stretched both of his arms, gripping the top frame of the sail. Gomu, Gomu, no! With his body coiled like a tightly wound spring, Luffy propelled himself with astonishing speed toward the unsuspecting bird, his cry of rocket echoing through the air. Zoro, gazing up at the sky, couldn't believe what he was witnessing, muttered, can't believe he thought of that. However, as Luffy closed in on his prey, the bird turned the tables, clamping its beak around his head and ensnaring him. Caught off guard by the creature's size and strength, Luffy found himself trapped. His voice pierced the sky as he screamed for Zoro's help. Realizing the dire situation, Zoro's frustration boiled over. You idiot, he bellowed, his voice laced with equal parts exasperation and concern. Rowing with all his might, he furiously propelled the boat, desperately attempting to reach his captured comrade. What the heck are you doing, jeez, he shouted. As the boat sliced through the gentle waves, Luffy's anguished cries gradually faded into the distance. The once serene sea became a battleground for the wandering pirates, their quest for food taking an unexpected turn. In the distance, three struggling castaways catch his attention. They desperately call out to him, their voices carrying over the water. Hey, stop the boat! The boat over there! Stop! Though he continues rowing, Zoro notices their plight and wonders aloud. There are people in trouble here too? A shout escapes his lips as he addresses the castaways. I don't have the time to stop. You guys get on yourselves. The castaways, on the verge of drowning, reply with a mixture of panic and disbelief. You! What did you say? 
Despite Zoro's unrelenting speed, the three managed to grab onto the boat, gasping for breath. Zoro, impressed by their climbing skills, slows down and remarks, Huh? Your climbing skills aren't bad. Were you trying to run us over? The castaways exclaimed, still shaken from the depths of the sea. As they catch their breath and recover from their ordeal, they continue, Thank God! Why is this guy so reckless? The middle castaway, wearing a black beanie adorned with a skull and crossbones, adding a red nose in the center of the skull, draws his sword hastily and declares, Hey, stop the boat! This is the pirate buggy's territory. Zoro, staring back with intensity, responds sharply, What? In a swift moment, Zoro effortlessly pummels the pirates, leaving them bruised, battered, and bleeding from every pore. As they apologize and laugh in their own pain, they exclaim, We didn't know you were pirate hunter Zoro. We're really sorry. Taking their place, the three pirates row while Zoro watches them carefully. His tone filled with a warning, he instructs them, You three made me lose track of my friend. Put some back into it. If I don't find my friend, you three are in for it. Oh yeah, why were the three of you drifting in the middle of the ocean? Quickly conceding, the pirates reply in haste. Yes, 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 good question, you finally asked. The second pirate chimes in and the third one follows. That girl! Yeah, that bad girl! The first pirate finishes their explanation. But she's real cute too! Amidst the ongoing rowing, the second pirate seizes the opportunity to beat the first one. And the third pirate, choosing his words carefully, adds... The three of us just finished robbing a ship, and on the way back. In their sailing boat, flying a flag adorned with a skull and crossbones sporting a red nose, the pirates revel in their triumph. They marvel at the treasure chest filled to the brim with gold and riches, gleefully exclaiming, So much treasure! Who would have thought that such a small ship would carry so much loot? One of the pirates playfully places a crown on his head, anticipating something grand. Maybe Buggy will greatly reward us. However, the pirate with the black beanie spots something in the distance and alerts the others. What's that little boat doing there? As they approach the mysterious vessel, they discover a slim young figure with long orange hair slumped against the boat's edge, clutching a chest. The pirate observes, there's someone fainted at the side of that boat. Intrigued, they draw closer and call out, Oh, it's a girl? Hey, what's wrong with you? Are you almost dead? The orange-haired woman, her hair reaching the end of her neck, responds with hazy confusion. Am I dreaming? I actually found someone in this vast ocean. Trembling, she continues, I don't know who you guys are, but please give me a cup of water, please. And if it's convenient... Please provide me a small piece of bread. I... I was in a shipwreck. Worried for her well-being pointing to the chest, she remarked, If you want money, I'll give it to you. Please, save me. Seizing the opportunity, they smirk and reply, Sure, we'll save you, but can we see that treasure chest first? The woman with a blue striped shirt and a mischievous smile responds, Sure, please take whatever you want, but please give me water first. With their eyes fixated on the chest, the pirates arrogantly say, What's your hurry? Let me take a look at the treasure first. Yeah, yeah, we'll save you, don't worry. With laughter in her voice, the woman surprises them, saying, Since you guys seem to like it so much, I'll give you the boat too as a bonus. As she sails away, leaving the pirates behind, they shout in despair, That woman took our treasure and our ship! Their panic intensifies when they open the chest and discover it to be empty. Left stranded, rain begins to pour heavily from dark clouds that race towards them. From a distance, the woman looks back at the sinking ship and remarks, There's a bit of dark clouds towards the south. Found a cloud approaching, the storm following it. With a smile of satisfaction, she proclaims, The wind will pick up, and then that boat will sink, and bingo! While the ship sinks from the intense waves carried by the storm. Proudly, she waves her hand, bidding the sinking pirates farewell. Bye-bye, I'm taking your treasure. Desperate cries echo from the sinking ship as the pirates scream for help amidst the raging storm. Damn you! You planned this! Someone help us!
Recalling the events that led them to this dire situation, the pirates recount their tale with anger and frustration. And that's what happened. Terrible, huh? Listening intently, Zoro comments earnestly on the trio. She can predict the weather. This girl must be something special. Lost in thought, he adds, I wonder if she'd join us. Fueling their rage, the third pirate, consumed by anger, shouts, If I find her, I'm gonna kill her. The second pirate declares, First we got to get our look back, while the third one chimes in. Yeah, if we go back empty-handed, Buggy will... Interrupting their conversation, Zoro questions them. Who's Buggy? Fear seeping into his voice, the second pirate with the black beanie responds. He's our pirate leader. Haven't you ever heard of Buggy the Clown? He's a dangerous man who ate one of the devil fruits. Zoro, intrigued by the mention of a devil fruit, wonders aloud, Ate a devil fruit? The sun hung high in the sky over Orangetown, a picturesque area filled with charming cottage-like houses and quaint shops. The town square boasted a small fountain, its cascading water resembling the graceful spout of a whale. However, an eerie silence enveloped the streets, devoid of any sign of life. Amidst this serene setting, a massive ship loomed at the harbor. Its imposing presence commanded attention cannons adorning every corner with the red and white stripes adorned around the ship's hull, giving it a distinct and foreboding appearance. At the prow, a figurehead caught the eye, a peculiar blend of a clown and an elephant, an oddity that added to the ship's mystique. In the heart of the vessel, beneath the towering main mast, a large red and white tent pillared directly onto of the main mast of the ship. Its colors matched the ship's exterior, and a menacing skull and crossbones with a red nose in the center were emblazoned at the entrance, serving as a chilling warning to all who dared approach. In the midst of this peaceful scene, a woman with vibrant orange hair raced through the narrow streets of Orangetown. With fear on her face, she glanced over her shoulder and caught sight of her pursuers a trio of formidable individuals known as the superhuman Domingos who served under Buggy's rule. Breathless and determined, the orange-haired woman clutched a precious map tightly in her hand. It was the coveted navigation chart to the Grand Line, a treasure sought after by many. The Domingos' shouts echoed through the empty streets as they closed in on her, demanding the return of their stolen prize. Stop! You can't run from us! The Domingos bellowed, their voices filled with rage and desperation. Thief! Give back our navigation map! Gasping for air, the woman continued her desperate flight. I finally have it! The navigation chart to the Grand Line, she said to herself. Unyielding in their pursuit, the pirates' voices grew more frantic. Damn! If we don't get that map back, we're dead! If we let the captain know what happened, we're gonna have an ugly death! Meanwhile, in another corner of Orangetown, members of Buggy's crew frantically reported an alarming sight to their captain. Reporting in, Captain Buggy, there's an unknown flying object in the air, they cried out. Buggy's attention was drawn to the peculiar bird soaring above, its wings slicing through the air with grace. However, the bird's beak held an unexpected captive, none other than Luffy, his body still tightly clenched within the bird's mouth. Seizing the opportunity, Buggy issued a command, his voice laced with a sinister undertone. Use the cannon and shoot it down, he ordered. Aye, Captain, one of Buggy's loyal crew members confirmed. With a deafening explosion, the cannon unleashed its destructive force, hitting the bird with unrelenting fury. The unexpected impact jolted Luffy free, sending him hurtling through the sky. Moments later, he crash-landed between the pursuing Domingos and the fleeing woman. Smoke billowed around him as Luffy emerged from the haze. Why did they shoot me with the cannon? Damn it, he muttered with frustration. The Domingos, wide-eyed and shocked by Luffy's survival, exclaimed in disbelief, What the? He's alive! Luffy, regaining his composure, clutched his iconic straw hat and proclaimed, Huh, finally landed. Amidst the chaos, the woman who had been evading the pirates seized the opportunity in front of her. Impressed by Luffy's entrance and seeking a way out of her predicament, she approached him with a calculated smile. Oh, boss, you're finally here. I've been waiting for you to save me. I'll leave everything to you, she exclaimed. The pirates, momentarily distracted, realized their quarry had slipped away once again. 
She ran off again. We don't have to chase that girl anymore. Her boss is still here, the Domingos declared, their swords now drawn. Luffy was completely confused. Suddenly, a member of Buggy's crew steps forward, a devious grin plastered across his face. Am I right, boss? The crew member bellows triumphantly, his voice echoing through the streets. That map was Captain Buggy's treasure. With a swift and forceful punch, he strikes Luffy's head, knocking his beloved straw hat to the ground. Luffy's eyes widen in anger. Without a second thought, he retaliates, launching a powerful punch of his own. The crew member is sent sprawling to the floor, his cheek reddening with the impact. Breathing heavily, Luffy reaches down and snatches his fallen hat from the ground, clutching it tightly in his hand. With a protective voice, he declares, Don't you dare mess up my hat. The commotion catches the attention of the other two superhuman Domingos, worried about their comrade. They charge towards Luffy, their swords at the ready. But Luffy, fueled by his fury, effortlessly dispatches them one by one. With swift punches and nimble dodges, he overpowers his opponents, leaving them sprawled on the ground in defeat. As the dust settles, with a mischievous glint in her eyes, she reappears back into the scene. Hanging from the roof of a nearby building near him, her gaze is completely fixed on Luffy. Wow, she exclaims, her voice filled with genuine surprise. You're really strong. You beat those guys with swords barehanded. Perplexed by the unfolding events, Luffy gazed at the woman. His curiosity peaked. Huh? Who are you anyway? He asked. With a calm demeanor, the woman introduced herself. I am a thief who only steals treasure from pirates. My name is Nami. Want to be partners? She proposed. Luffy's eyes widened. Only steal treasure from pirates? He repeated, contemplating the proposition that had been presented to him. Yeah, I'm a thief who steals from pirates, she repeated as the pirate thief continued. If we team up, we could get a whole lot of money. But Luffy ignored her and walked away. No way. I'm not interested in teaming up with you. Nami leapt off the roof and followed after him. Hang on a second. Walking side by side, the thief questioned him. So what's that hat? When you said they nearly damaged it, you got so mad. Is it expensive? Luffy held on to his straw hat and said, This is my treasure. Nami laughed at the motion. Treasure? I wonder if there are any jewels inside it. Maybe it's a treasure map? High above the town, on a large roof that overlooked the deserted streets, Captain Buggy reigned over his crew with an iron fist. His piercing gaze bore into his men as he questioned them with deadly intensity. You still cannot catch the thief, Buggy's voice thundered. In panic, one of his crew members tried to reason with the captain. We're, we're in the middle of searching, Captain. Buggy's annoyance was palpable as he demanded answers, his voice echoing through the air. How on earth did it get stolen so easily? You're talking about the Grand Line map, right? It got stolen? Temporarily calming himself, Buggy's tone returned to its usual level, though the tension lingered. We were going to go into the Grand Line soon, then go in and start our rampage. One of his subordinates, nervous and eager to explain their predicament, stepped forward. Well, you see, boss, we lost it through a bit of a mistake. The cabinet where the map was in still had the key in its lock, and only the robber knows. Buggy's eyes widened as his voice turned dangerously sharp. What did you say? The poor pirate, beads of sweat forming on his forehead, hurriedly responded. I said the robber knows. What? Rubber knows? Buggy snapped aggressively, his frustration reaching its peak, causing chairs, barrels, and axes to be hurled from the rooftop. With a menacing glare, Buggy pointed to his unmistakable big red nose, challenging the trembling pirate before him. Does my nose look funny to you? Like a round nose? The pirate, panic-stricken, desperately attempted to defend himself. Oh, oh no, sir. I think you're making a huge mistake. Huge, red, and fake, Buggy flared. The pirate worried, fell off his feet as his captain demanded, die a painful death. Wait, wait, captain. I never said. The pirate tried to reassure his captain. Ignoring the pirate's pleas, Buggy strode toward his throne, flanked by his loyal right-hand men. Taking his seat with a regal air, he issued a deadly question that hung heavy in the air. Who am I? 
As if responding to his unspoken command, an unseen force wrapped around the pirate's throat, lifting him off the ground. The man dangled helplessly, struggling to breathe. Buggy! Captain! Can't! Can't breathe! His crew, dressed in their eccentric clown attire, watched in awe and horror as Buggy showcased the terrifying power of his devil fruit. It appeared! The power of the devil fruit! They murmured in shocked disbelief. Seated upon his throne, Buggy's slim figure exuded an air of authority. His short blue hair stood out against his white and red striped shirt, which was reminiscent of a clown's attire with his unmistakable red nose on his face. With makeup, crossbones were placed on his face formed an X with two blue lines near his eyes. His hat displaying his Jolly Roger sat proudly atop his head. The rest of his attire consisted of loose pants, striped socks, and pointy shoes. Completing his ensemble, an orange, fur-lined captain's coat draped over his shoulders. As Buggy settled into his throne, his presence commanded respect and fear from all those who dared to oppose him. Prepare the cannon, he demanded. As the chaos unfolded, the pirate tried to reason with Buggy the Clown, pleading for his life. I didn't do anything wrong! Help! Help me! Buggy coldly commanded his crew to obliterate the hapless pirate. Blast him to pieces! He roared with sadistic pleasure. Screams pierced the air as the pirate's life was claimed by the devastating blast of a cannon. Unfazed by the death unfolding before him, Buggy's eyes blazed. Recover the map and make sure you take all the village's treasure too. With an ominous clack of his feet, his men responded without delay, their voices echoing in unison. Yes, sir, Captain Buggy. Inside a small house elsewhere in the town, the room was dimly lit, casting long shadows on the walls. Nami, a cunning and confident woman, sat atop a table, her eyes fixed on Luffy. He, on the other hand, seemed carefree, casually perched on a chair nearby with his legs crossed. Curiosity sparked within Nami as she broke the silence. Oh, so you got separated from your crew. How many people are in your crew? She asked. Luffy's response was simple his gaze wandering around the room. Only one. Is this your house? His nonchalant manner contrasted with Nami's inquisitive nature. Realizing they were the only ones present, Nami explained the village's predicament. No, I don't even know whose house this is. Everyone in this village is hiding in a shelter outside of the town. They're trying to avoid conflict with the buggy pirates. Curious, Luffy questions her. Is he that scary, that pirate called Nami? I am Nami. The pirate is Buggy, she sharply retorted to defend her name and reputation. She took a breath, composing herself, and continued to enlighten Luffy. About Buggy. He's a famous pirate, known for his love of cannons. When a bunch of kids from a village where he once stayed made fun of his nose, he used a cannon to wipe out the whole village. And it's said that he's got a really strange power. Luffy turned around, his eyes narrowing in confusion. But then why isn't there anyone in this village? Frustration crept into Nami's voice as she slammed her hand on the table. I just said they're hiding. What have you been listening to all this time? Luffy brushed off her outburst, seemingly unfazed. So you're stealing from these empty houses? Indignation surged through Nami as she exclaimed, her voice full of disdain. That's despicable. Didn't I just tell you I only steal from pirates? She regained her composure, placing a hand on her head. Don't even compare me with those common house robbers. It's so tiring talking to you. Luffy laughed, seemingly amused by her fiery personality. Calm down. Nami let out a weary sigh, her eyes fixed on Luffy. She decided to confide in him, revealing something ambitious. My goal is to get a hundred million berries. Then I'm going to buy a certain village. Luffy's eyes widened in disbelief as he watched her intently. Buy a village? A hundred million berries is a lot, so you have to steal from a lot of pirates. Nami's smirk revealed a mischievous plan as she reached into her pocket. I've got a plan for that. With a map in her hand, she declared proudly, Look, this is the Grand Line map I just stole. I'm going to steal some treasure from this buggy guy, then I'm going to the Grand Line. Her smile grew wider. Then I'm going to steal from even greater pirates who carry much more treasure. What do you think? Don't you want to team up and earn a bunch? You look strong, I could use your power, and you'll get your share too. Luffy's curiosity peaked as he considered her proposal. 
By any chance, do you know how to navigate? Nami confirmed it with pride, a glimmer of excitement in her eyes. Yeah, of course I know. Don't look down on me. Navigation skills, well, there aren't a lot of people who know more about it than I do, especially since I love the sea. Luffy's face lit up with enthusiasm. I see. Yeah, that's great. We're also on the way to the Grand Line. Surprised and hopeful, Nami questioned him. Really? Luffy nodded eagerly. Yeah, hey, you, come join our crew as our navigator. Become a member of our pirate crew. No way! Nami's response was immediate. Luffy stood there, puzzled. Nami tried to quickly resolve the situation, avoiding any further discussion. Oh, so you are a pirate. Forget it. We didn't have this conversation. I don't want to team up with you. She pointed at his hat, her voice tinged with suspicion. I get it. So you're going to use that map of yours in your hat to search for treasure. Protectively, Luffy placed his hand on his straw hat. I told you this isn't a treasure map, Nami challenged him skeptically. Yeah, right. Then what is it? Why call that stupid rag of a hat your treasure? Luffy removed his hat, revealing a warm smile as he gazed at it fondly. I got this hat ages ago from a friend. It's my precious treasure. I swore on this hat that I'd gather up a crew and become a pirate. Nami took a moment to process Luffy's words, her thoughts momentarily conflicting. Then she hopped off the table. Pirates this, pirates that, people these days. The things I hate most in this world are pirates, but I love money and oranges. Glancing back at Luffy, she quietly pondered. Damn it, is he just a stupid, useless pirate? He doesn't look like he's got anything to steal, plus he doesn't seem like much help. Hey, come on, be our navigator, Luffy said, breaking Nami's train of thought. I said no already, she barked back. Then a devious smile formed on her lips as an idea crossed her mind. Well, it looks like you're in a fix, so I'll consider it under one condition. Luffy lit up with anticipation. Really? Yeah, I guess I am kind of screwed, so what are the terms? She pointed out her condition with a sly grin. Go with me to where Buggy is, that's all, that's all I want you to do. With joy radiating from him, Luffy hopped out of his chair and headed for the door. Okay, okay, let's go. Where's Buggy anyway? Caught off guard by his sudden enthusiasm, Nami scrambled to catch up with him. Hang on a second, I've got one more thing to prepare. She grabbed a length of rope on the way out. With curiosity, Luffy questioned her. What's that rope for? Nami responded with a playful smile. It's just a rope. You got a problem? As they walked together, she mused to herself, as if I'd ever become a pirate. Guiding Luffy down the street, Nami pointed towards their destination. Just at the end of this road, the bar where the pirates are staying is over there. But then, what do you plan on doing there? Luffy said. Seizing the opportunity, Nami replied mysteriously. That you will find out, as she swiftly used the rope to tie up Luffy. When we get there, stupid pirate. Panic filled his Luffy's voice as he struggles to get out. Hey, what are you doing? At the rooftop, a tense atmosphere hung in the air as Buggy, the red-nosed captain, unleashed his fury upon his crew. His hasty shouts echoed through the surroundings, berating his men for their failure. What? You lost track of that map thief! You three strong men chased after one thief and ended up like this! Buggy's voice thundered. The superhuman Domingos began to plead for their lives, realizing the gravity of their mistake. We're really sorry, Captain, but... There was a really strong guy. He, he was her boss, and he wore a straw hat. They desperately stammered Buggy's eyes, blazed with fury as he demanded his crew, die a flashy death. Their screams filled the rooftop, painting a picture of terror and chaos. Just as the tension reached its peak, a crew member abruptly appeared on the scene, breaking the intense atmosphere. Captain Buggy, the crew member called out, gasping for breath. What? Buggy bellowed, his attention shifting towards the new arrival. With a sense of urgency, the pirate continued, relaying crucial information. The thief we just saw, she returned here herself. Okay, bring her in. Buggy's demand, however, it was also followed by surprise. What? Came here herself? What are you talking about? The pirate, still catching their breath, provided a report. I don't know why, but she's here. Without hesitation, Buggy issued his command once again. Okay, bring her in then. 
Meanwhile, the superhuman Domingos, eager to make amends, swiftly interjected with an urgent revelation. This guy! It's this guy, Captain! That's her boss who fell from the sky! In front of the red-nosed Captain, Nami dropped Luffy, bound and helpless. Nami, holding the stolen map in her hand, declared confidently, I captured the thief and brought him back, Captain Buggy the Clown! I will return your map too! Luffy's struggles against the tight ropes only fueled his anger. You! You tricked me! He growled through gritted teeth. Unfazed by Luffy's outburst, Nami stuck out her tongue with a mischievous smile. Buggy, intrigued by her audacity, questioned her motives. I see, you're obediently returning the map to me, but why are you doing this? With a smile, she revealed. I had a fight with my boss. I've had enough of him. Let me join the Buggy crew. Surprised by her request, it took a moment for Buggy to process the unexpected turn of events. However, soon enough, laughter erupted from his throat. So you're fed up with him? You're a pretty amusing girl? Okay, I'll let you join as part of my crew. Amidst the jubilation of her successful ploy, Nami thought to herself, Success! Now I'll just steal Buggy's treasure and Grand Line map, then get out of this village. Moments later, thrown into a cubicle cage, Luffy found himself imprisoned, its steel bars trapping him. His disdain for Nami's presence was clear. I don't want her in my crew anymore. At the harbor of the town, Zoro arrived with the pirates he encountered during his journey. They proudly announced their arrival to their master. We're here, Master Zoro, the pirates declared, eager to serve their respected swordsmen. Zoro observed the surroundings with a sharp gaze, noticing the eerie emptiness of the village. Perplexed, he voiced his concern. What's this? The village is empty? I don't see anyone around. The pirates nodded in agreement, acknowledging the peculiar situation. One of them stepped forward, revealing what happened. The truth is, we buggy pirates are here at the moment raiding this village. As the second pirate engaged in a conversation with the third, Worry crept into their voices. What do we do? What do we tell Captain Buggy? We came back empty-handed, they pondered. The third pirate, aware of their limited options, responded with a somber tone. We'll just have to tell him the truth. We've no other choice, since that bitch will be out somewhere at sea by now. Feeling the weight of the situation, Zoro's hands instinctively gripped his swords. As he made a decision, he declared, I better meet this buggy guy then, cause I might be able to gather some information about Luffy. The buggy pirates, perched atop the village's bar known as Drinker's Pub, erupted with joy and revelry. Buggy, their captain, raised his voice to his men, his face beaming with delight. The stolen map of the Grand Line has been recovered, he proclaimed. Furthermore, we've recruited a new crew member. Everything is going our way. Now drink to your heart's content. Then let us fight flashily on the battlefield. Amidst the jubilant celebrations, the pirates showcased their extraordinary acrobatic skills, engaging in mesmerizing displays of dance and knife juggling. They played their instruments with a flair reminiscent of a circus performance as they joyfully drank. Buggy's attention turned to Nami, and he called out to her with mirthful admiration. Nami, are you drinking, you little rascal? Nami, not one to back down, drank several bottles of beer and replied, Yes, Captain, I'm drinking, Captain Buggy. Observing Nami's drinking prowess, another crewmate couldn't resist the challenge and approached her. Newcomer, let's have a drinking contest, he proposed. Confident, Nami accepted the challenge and they continued to engage in a spirited race of drinking. Triumphant, she grinned as her opponent collapsed to the floor in defeat. Victory, she exclaimed. In that moment, she thought to herself, my drinking capacity is endless. If they continue drinking like this, stealing their treasure will be easier than I thought. Pirates are so simple-minded. They're easy to fool. In the background, Luffy, still bound within the cage, observed the lively scene with a longing gaze. That looks like fun, he murmured, expressing his desire to join in the revelry. That's why a pirate's life is so great, he added, clenching the steel bars between his teeth. Nami, hearing Luffy's yearning, knelt down to his level and playfully taunted him. How's it going, boss? She teased. Oh, shut up and let me out. I'm hungry, too. Give me something to eat, Luffy retorted, his voice muffled by the bars. 
However, Nami ended up feeding Luffy, leading him to express genuine interest. You're a nice person, he remarked, contemplating her character. I guess I'll let you join my crew. I don't want to, you idiot, Nami vehemently shouted, refusing the offer. Yet she couldn't help but reveal her true concerns to Luffy. Don't you even see what situation you're in? She cautioned. You're more likely to be sold off by these pirates. Don't worry, because if my plans work smoothly, I'll open the cage's lock and help you run away, since I have nothing against you. Luffy, unfazed by the danger, simply responded, Then open it now. Before Nami could act, Buggy suddenly appeared behind her, his laughter echoing his amusement. You've got yourself a pretty good follower there, thief boss, he exclaimed. Luffy looked up at Buggy. What are you talking about? She's not my follower, he stated matter-of-factly. The red-nosed captain grinned mischievously. Yes, yes, I know what you mean. She betrayed you after all, he quipped, clutching his beer tightly. Even though I got my map back, it's still a terrible crime to steal from this man here. Your fate has been chosen for you. Perplexed, Luffy responded, hope gleaming in his eyes. Oh, you gonna let me go? Buggy's laughter rang out once more. Yeah, I'm letting you go. You think I'm that stupid? He taunted. Boys, prepare the buggy special cannonball, Buggy commanded with enthusiasm. The crew members assembled the cannon, an emblem of Buggy's power, while chanting their praises, the buggy special cannonball is ready, Captain. With the cannonball securely in place, Buggy bellowed, all right, show them, show them its power. The crew aimed the cannon towards a nearby house from their perch on the rooftop. Buggy, with a flourish, unleashed the devastating buggy ball, obliterating and reducing the street of two-story buildings into rubble. Nami watched in disbelief. Proudly, Buggy proclaimed, This power is so great, this thing can wipe out this little village entirely in one shot. This, along with the powers I have gained from the devil fruit, assure my future success in the Grand Line. As the crew moved the cannon in front of Luffy, who remained bound in the cage, Captain Buggy issued his command to Nami. Now shoot the cannon, Nami, and swear upon this your loyalty and sincerity of the desire to rule the world with me. Get rid of your old boss once and for all. With a serious expression, Luffy fixed his gaze on Nami. Trembling, Nami found herself caught in an agonizing moment. Kill that guy? Me? She questioned, grappling with her choices. No, no, Captain Buggy, I'm just fine. First, let's, yeah, sake, let's drink more sake, just forget about him. However, Buggy's grin turned sinister as he demanded, kill him. The pirates in the crowd roared with anticipation, their voices blending with joyous laughter. Kill him, just finish him off in one go, shoot, 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 shoot. Conflicted, Nami's thoughts raced. Oh dear. Why did this have to happen? If I don't shoot this, I'll definitely die, even though that kid is a pirate. If I just kill him like this, then there's no difference between pirates and me. Luffy continued to stare at her intently as Captain Buggy grew impatient. Nami, stop spoiling the fun. Just hurry up and light it. In that tense moment, Luffy pointed out, your hand is shaking, as Nami's trembling became apparent. For her, the world seemed to stand still. Luffy's words followed, firm and unwavering. That's what you get, for only being half prepared to mess with pirates. Shivering, Nami questioned, Prepared? Prepared to take a human life so easily? Is that what it takes to be a pirate? No, it's not, Luffy responded, his voice calm and certain. The frustration of the buggy pirates intensified as they shouted, Quit stalling! Luffy's mouth widened into a grin as he offered Nami a piece of wisdom. You've got to be prepared to risk your own life. Shoot, 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 their pirates thundered, their collective energy building like an impending storm. In the midst of the chaotic scene, Nami stood there before the cannon. She hesitated. Her reluctance did not go unnoticed by one of Buggy's crew, who stepped forward with a lit match in hand. New kid, stop wasting your time, he sneered with mockery. Don't you know how to light a fuse? As the pirate prepared to take control of the situation, without hesitation, she reached beneath her orange skirt and retrieved three sticks tightly strapped to her leg. You just have to put the fire against the cannon fuse and light it. The pirate trailed off, and with a seamless motion, Nami swiftly connected the three sticks, forming a solid staff. 
With a powerful swing, she struck the pirate across the head, sending him crashing to the ground. Shockwaves of silence reverberated through the onlooking crowd. Damn! I shouldn't have! Nami's thoughts raced. Buggy, the pirate captain with a patchwork face and a vibrant red nose, bellowed in fury at Nami. Nami, you idiot! What the hell do you think you're doing? I gave you the honor of lighting the cannon fuse to welcome you into my crew. Luffy, with his straw hat, interjected with surprising composure. What? You're saving me now? Nami's voice dripped with frustration as she retorted. Don't be stupid. I only did that without thinking. I did it because I don't even want to pretend to be one of these disgusting, hideous pirates. Pirates stole the life of someone who was precious to me. I hate pirates more than anything. Luffy's expression softened as he considered her response. So that's why you don't like pirates. Just as he was about to voice his thoughts, a sudden realization washed over him. The fuse is burning! Crap! Luffy panicked. In a desperate attempt to free himself, he sank his teeth into the iron bars of the cage that trapped him. I'm gonna die! As the lighted fuse inched closer to the cannon, Buggy's fury boiled over. You tried to make a fool of me, you little bitch! Give her a flashy death! Nami's gaze snapped to the sizzling fuse, her heart pounding with a mix of fear and determination. But before she could react, the swarm of Buggy's men lunged towards her, blades glinting in the harsh sunlight. Die a flashy death! Meanwhile, Luffy thrashed against his bindings, his voice strained with urgency. Shit! I'm gonna be blown up! Nami's staff whirled through the air, aimed at her attackers. However, the nimble pirates easily evaded her strikes, taunting her with their acrobatic prowess. Missed us, they jeered. I can't die this way, Luffy beckoned, trying to bite off the iron bars. In the midst of the chaos, Nami made a split-second decision. She abandoned her defensive stance, ignoring the incoming assaults, and reached out her arms, grabbing the fuse, burning the tissue of her skin. With a surge of pain, she quelled the flame, preventing it from entering the cannon, but danger still lurked behind her. Luffy's warning reached her ears just in time, and she pivoted to face her assailants. Before they could strike, a figure emerged from the shadows, swift and deadly. It was Zoro. He intercepted the attackers, his blades cutting through the air with precise and swift movements. The buggy pirate stood no chance as they face-palmed against the sheath of his swords, Luffy's voice filled with relief and joy as he called out, Zoro! Nami, her hands still singed from the burning fuse, couldn't help but feel a mix of gratitude and bewilderment as she looked back. Did you get hurt? Zoro asked her. I'm, I'm okay, she replied, her voice wavering slightly. Luffy's exuberance overflowed as he continued. Yes, thank goodness. You actually found this place. Get me out of this thing quick. With the hilt of his sword resting casually against his shoulder, Zoro took a moment to reflect on the chaotic events that had unfolded. You, is this your idea of fun? You got caught by a bird and got carried away, and now when I finally find you, you're in a cage? Stupid. The murmurs of Buggy's men intrigued the air. Hey, that guy, Zoro? Did he just call him Zoro? The pirate hunter Zoro? Why the hell is he talking with a thief? They wondered aloud. Nami's mind raced, connecting the dots from Luffy's earlier words. The crew member that guy was talking about, Pirate Hunter Zoro? What's going on here? Buggy, his arms crossed over his chest, approached Zoro with a sinister smile. You're definitely Zoro. Are you aiming for my head? He taunted. Zoro's voice held a calm resolve as he replied, Nope, not interested. I've stopped hunting pirates. Buggy's daggers spun in his hands, his smirk growing wider. But I'm interested. If I kill you, my name will become more famous. Unfazed, Zoro maintained his stance. If you don't want to die, then just leave me alone. Buggy's crew erupted into cheers, goading their captain. Oh, kill him, captain. Send Zoro off. Buggy readied himself for the impending clash. If you don't show your true skills now, you'll soon be covered in blood. Zoro, gripping a sword between his teeth, Fine, if that's what you want. In a flash of steel and brute force, Zoro struck with a precision that left Buggy dismembered. His arm, chest, and leg were severed clean off, scattering into scattered pieces. Luffy comments, that guy's so weak, while Nami just watched the sheer ferocity of Zoro's brutality and shock.
Despite seeing their captain scattered on the floor, Buggy's crew burst into laughter, their mirth echoing eerily across the battlefield. Zoro, triumphant, stood amidst the carnage, clutching all three of his swords. His eyes shifted towards the fallen captain as he muttered, He died really easily. However, his attention was quickly drawn to the unsettling laughter that filled the air, emanating from the remaining buggy pirates. Luffy, trapped inside a cage, called out urgently to Zoro, Hey, Zoro, hurry and get me out of this thing. Zoro acknowledged his captain's plea and confirmed as he fixated his gaze on the steel cage. Nami, curious and puzzled, pondered to herself, What's with those pirates? Their captain died, but they're laughing. Inspecting the cage that's holding Luffy captive, Zoro realized the predicament they were in. This thing won't open without a key. I can't slice through these iron bars, he informed his captain. Luffy, tied up, responded, I see. As Zoro tried to free Luffy from his cage, the laughter of the buggy pirates persisted, fueling Zoro's curiosity. What is so funny? Just give us the key. I don't want to fight you guys, Zoro demanded. Meanwhile, Luffy examined the surroundings, his expression growing more bewildered. They're pretty weird, he murmured. Suddenly, Zoro's focus shattered as an intense pain pierced his side. He staggered, coughing up blood as he witnessed a floating hand impaling him with a dagger. Luffy, caught off guard, called out in shock, while Nami questioned the origin of the mysterious hand. Damn it! What the hell is it? Zoro exclaimed, clutching his wound. He turned around, his gaze fixated on the extraordinary sight before him. The hand! The hand is floating in the air! he managed to utter, trying to contain the agony. Buggy, emerging from the shadows, floated menacingly behind Zoro, reveling in his abilities. The chop-chop fruit, he declared proudly, merging his dismembered body parts back together effortlessly. That's the name of the devil fruit that I ate. No matter how you try to slice me up, you can't because I'm a splitting man. He stuck his body back together. I thought that the devil fruits were just a myth. Nami said in astonishment. As Zoro faced the formidable foe, Luffy analyzed the situation. A splitting man, that guy's a monster, he concluded despite being a rubber man. Buggy, grinning wickedly, taunted Zoro. I see I've missed your vital body parts, Roranoa Zoro, but it's still a pretty serious injury. Victory is mine. Zoro, wounded and regretful, thought to himself, I actually knew that guy had eaten some kind of devil fruit. I was careless. He's winning for sure now. Damn it, I came to save Luffy, but look at me now. Gasping for breath, he struggled to maintain his composure. The buggy pirates cheered their captain with sadistic glee. The captain's so cool, go kill him off, send them away, they jeered. Nami, realizing the gravity of the situation, panicked internally. This is dangerous. The situation's reversed, she silently lamented. If I just stand here like an idiot, I'll be killed along with those two. With a defiant shout, Luffy erupted his statement. Stabbing from the back, that's dirty, you big nose. Buggy and his crew were taken aback, shocked by Luffy's unexpected outburst. That idiot, he could have said anything but that, Nami told him. In a fit of rage, Buggy launched his hand once again, aiming to strike Luffy, shouting, Who are you calling a big nose? The knife purged through the air as it flew directly at the encaged prisoner, landing its mark. However, Luffy reacted swiftly, clenching it between his teeth. With a resounding snap, he broke the blade in half, proclaiming loudly, I swear I'm gonna take you down. Buggy, amused by Luffy's declaration, chuckled and taunted him. Take me down? His crew joined in with laughter. You're gonna take me down? You're hilarious. You three are gonna die right now on the spot. Nami, overwhelmed by the unfolding events, voiced her despondency. Everything's finished. We're dead. Zoro, wounded but resolute, fought to maintain his focus amidst the chaos. Meanwhile, Luffy's laughter resonated through the air. I'm not gonna die, he exclaimed with unwavering conviction. Buggy, unable to comprehend Luffy's audacity, extended his arms wide and boasted proudly, And just exactly how do you plan to take me down in this situation? Boys, laugh at him. Luffy, undeterred, shouted urgently, Run away, Zoro! Zoro questioned Luffy's command, unsure of his intentions. Bewildered, Nami retorted, Hey, your friend came to rescue you, but you're telling him to run away? What about you? Zoro, 
understanding Luffy's plan, exchanged a brief glance with his captain, a content smile forming on his lips. While Nami grappled with her uncertainty, panic taking hold, she desperately searched for an escape plan. Oh no! I have no idea what's going on! This is why I hate pirates! I have to think up some way to escape myself! She frantically thought to herself. Stupid idiot! You think I'm going to let you go, Roranoa Zoro? Buggy's voice echoed with malicious delight. With his devil fruit abilities, he disassembled his arms and hurled them towards Zoro, each holding a wickedly sharp knife. Bara bara no cannon, he bellowed, launching his daggers at Zoro with deadly precision. The clash of metal reverberated through the air as Zoro's katanas collided with Buggy's knives, striking at him relentlessly. Every twist and turn only brought him closer to the clutches of his adversaries. Amidst the merciless onslaught, Buggy's men taunted and jeered at Zoro, cruelly mocking his futile attempt to run away from Captain Buggy. Amidst the chaos, Zoro runs towards a cannon nearby and seizes the opportunity. With a firm grip on its base, he swiftly turns it completely opposite to where it was facing, pointing it directly at Buggy and his crew. I don't believe it, Nami exclaimed in disbelief. The buggy pirates shrieked in panic, scrambling to escape the imminent danger lurking in the cannon's ominous gaze. The cannon's pointing this way! That thing still has a buggy special cannonball in it! Buggy and his men urgently cried out in fear. Luffy watched the turn of events with wide-eyed awe. Zoro seized the opportunity, urging Nami to ignite the fuse. As she complied, Buggy's voice pierced through the mayhem, his desperate plea reverberating in the air. Stop it! Duck! He screamed, but it was too late. The cannon roared to life, unleashing its destructive force upon the buggy pirates. The blast tore through the rooftop, leaving a trail of devastation in its wake. Amidst the smoke and debris, Zoro saw his chance for escape. He turned to Nami. This is a good time to go. Who are you anyway? He curiously inquired. Through the haze of the aftermath, Nami watched the dissipating smoke. I... I'm a thief, she murmured, her voice barely audible. Wearing a wide grin, Luffy cheerfully interjected, affirming her role. She's our navigator, he declared. Nami vehemently denied Luffy's statement, her shout cutting through the tension. You're an idiot, aren't you? You're still on about that? If you've got time to say things like that, then how about thinking of a way to get out of that cage? She scolded him. Optimistic. Luffy responded with a mischievous gleam in his eyes. Hey, that's a good idea. I'll do that, he chirped. Nami looked down at him, her gaze filled with concern. Meanwhile, Zoro interjected with a calm demeanor. No, it's okay. You just stay in the cage, he assured Luffy. Battered and bruised from the explosive power of the buggy special cannonball, Captain Buggy coughed as he demanded retribution. Damn it, I'm not gonna let them escape, he growled fiercely. With most of Buggy's crew incapacitated, Zoro summoned all his remaining strength to lift the steel cage imprisoning Luffy. Yet his actions were not without consequence. Blood splattered against the cage's surface, causing it to pour continuously to the ground. Concerned, Luffy called out to Zoro, his voice filled with worry. Hey Zoro, it's okay, your stomach is gonna pop out if you do this, he warned. But Zoro, driven by an unwavering resolve, disregarded Luffy's cautionary words. If it wants to pop out, then let it, he affirmed with steely determination. He held the cage over his shoulder, blood seeping from his side. Don't tell me what to do, I'll do it my way, he declared. Don't butt in by saying anything, he added, his frustration palpable. Meanwhile, Nami observed the unfolding spectacle in awe. Why is he doing such things? And he's just a pirate, she pondered in disbelief. Seizing the opportunity, they all made their escape, knowing that Buggy would soon recover from his injuries. As the smoke cleared, Buggy's crew, disoriented and dazed, slowly regained their bearings on the rooftop. Filled with fury, Captain Buggy bellowed, Where did those three go? He thundered. His crew, desperate to find any trace of their escaped captives, responded with a mix of astonishment and dismay. They're gone, Captain! Zoro! Nami! Even the cage! They reported, their voices filled with disbelief. Buggy's face twisted with rage as he refused to accept the reality before him. No way! That cage took five people to drag it up here! He raged. 
His men, scanning the surroundings, delivered the next blow. Crap, it's been stolen, they shouted in dismay. Buggy, his fury reaching its peak, demanded answers. What has, he roared. They revealed in haste. The cage's key, it's gone, they confessed. Meanwhile, Zoro and Luffy had found refuge on another distant rooftop, far removed from the reach of Buggy and his men. As Zoro released the cage onto the rooftop surface, he panted heavily, his hand tightly clasping the stab wound that continued to bleed profusely. Anger welled up within Luffy as he shook the unyielding steel structure. Damn it, open, you stupid cage! Open! he said with frustration. Resting momentarily, Zoro spoke to Luffy silently. We're in a dangerous situation here, but what's been started must be finished, I suppose, he remarked with weary acceptance. Nearby, the buggy pirates scoured the area, desperately searching for any trace of their escaped prisoners. Their voices carried through the air as they called out in a frenzied search. The first floor of the pub! Not there! The village street! Can't see them! They shouted, their frantic cries echoing through the surrounding buildings. Buggy, consumed by fury and a thirst for revenge, rose to his feet. Those impudent fools! They dare to steal and toy with me, huh? Who am I? He roared. His crew, knowing their captain's wrath all too well, responded in unison. The pirate buggy, the clown, captain, they affirmed, their voices trembling with fear. That's correct, Buggy affirmed, intensifying his rage. I can see quite well that these are no ordinary thieves. Of course, you realize this means war. With his crew assembled, Buggy stood tall and proud in front of them his face contorted into a wicked grin as his voice boomed across the rooftop. We're the buggy crew. Under our flag, we're known for our flashy raids all over the world, Buggy proclaimed with confidence. Would it do to be looked down upon by three common thieves? His crew, a motley assortment of clown pirates, cheered in unison. No, it would not, they exclaimed, their voices filled with fervor. However, their captain's excitement seemed to drown out their words. I can't hear you again, Buggy demanded. No, it would not, his crew shouted back, their voices growing louder. Shut up, Buggy retorted, his tone playful yet commanding. We have to teach those people just how scary it is to make a whole pirate crew their enemy. Okay, let the beast show begin. In the background, the pirate crew erupted in cheers, their excitement reaching a crescendo. As the dust settled, the first mate, Moji, made his grand entrance, riding a lion with a magnificent pink mane. Buggy's excitement reached new heights. It's the first mate, Moji, the buggy pirates cheered. Moji, the skilled beast tamer, approached his captain with confidence. Did you call me Captain Buggy? Moji asked. The buggy pirates, reveling in the moment, responded with glee. It's first mate Moji's beast show. Moji, Donning a flawless white fur vest and sporting snowy white hair akin to a cuddly teddy bear, questionably asked his captain, May I be entrusted with the honor of claiming Roronoa Zoro's head? Buggy replied with a dismissive smile, Do whatever you want. Elsewhere, far away from the bustling pub, Zoro trudges forward, carrying Luffy in a cage as he shares with him, We're now quite far away from the pub. They won't be able to catch up with us anytime soon. We've escaped for now, but this cage is starting to annoy me. Luffy, not to let the cage hinder his fighting spirit, tries to gnaw at the iron bars. Yeah, if this thing doesn't open, I won't be able to fight all those bad guys if they come. Suddenly, Zoro's strength abandons him, and he collapses to the ground in utter exhaustion. Gasping for breath, he whispers, This is it. I don't have enough blood. I can't walk any longer. As Zoro lies on the ground, a peculiar sight catches his attention. A white dog sits before them, its tongue playfully sticking out. Zoro sits up, intrigued, and questions, What's with this dog? Luffy's curiosity also catches on as he exclaims, Dog? Hey, it is a dog. Zoro, resting against a post, looks at Luffy while he remarks, What is this? Is this really a dog? Hey, look, Zoro, the dog isn't moving at all. All the while, the dog wags its tail. Struggling to catch his breath, Zoro dismisses the oddity, saying, Whatever. What the dog does is up to the dog. Right now you've got to think of a way to get out of that cage. I wonder if it's dead, 
Luffy ponders aloud as he pokes his fingers at the white dog's eyes. Unbeknownst to him, his actions provoke the dog, and it swiftly clamps its jaws onto Luffy's head. A fierce exchange of blows ensues between Luffy and the dog, their voices intertwining in a chaotic symphony. You stupid dog, what the hell do you think you're doing? He continued as the dog aggressively barked against him. Zoro bellows in frustration. You idiot, do you even know the seriousness of the situation here? After a brief but intense struggle, both pirates find themselves exhausted, lying on their backs. In a tired state, Luffy mutters, stupid dog, while Zoro contemplates his dwindling strength, murmuring, damn it, I don't have enough blood. Just as Luffy and Zoro are catching their breaths, Nami appears on the scene, her face etched with worry. She admonishes them, you two, what on earth are you doing? If you just lie around here in the middle of the street, Buggy will definitely find you. Both pirates look up at her, and Luffy greets her enthusiastically. Hey, navigator. Says who? Nami contests with a raised voice. In a calmer tone, the thief explains, I just came to repay my debt to you because you saved my life back there. Perplexed, Luffy questions her. Repay? Nami then throws a key to the cage in front of Luffy. Overjoyed, Luffy exclaims, the key! You stole the cage key! She regretfully sighs. Yeah, even though I thought it was a really dumb thing to do. And because of that, I couldn't steal any maps or treasure. Luffy happily shakes the cage, declaring, Yes! I was wondering how I could get out of this thing. Zoro looks back at Luffy and comments, So the trouble we took running away paid off in the end. But before Luffy can grab the key, the mischievous dog snatches it and swallows it in a swift motion. A stunned silence envelops the air as everyone processes what just happened. Filled with anger, Luffy attempts to strangle the dog, shouting, You stupid dog! Spit it out! That thing you just swallowed isn't food, damn it! The dog barks defiantly, refusing to give in. Amidst the chaos, an elderly man with bundled gray hair enters the scene, donning a clumsy set of heavy brown leather armor. With an air of authority, he demands, You people! Don't do anything to Shu Shu! Perplexed, Luffy's stretched head asks, Shushu? Resting against a nearby post, Zoro queries, Who are you, mister? Wearing glasses and exuding wisdom, the old man replies, I'm the village's leader, or in other words, the mayor. His name is Boodle. As Nami and the mayor return from his house, Luffy asks, How's Zoro? The mayor responds evidently, I let him sleep at my house since it's just next door. Even though I told him that there's a doctor at the shelter, he won't listen and says that it'll get better after sleeping, even though it's an enormous injury. Curious, Luffy inquires about the dog. Is this dog's name Shushu? The mayor confirms, and Luffy presses further. What is he doing? Boodle empties a bag of dog food into a silver bowl placed it in front of the dog, while Shushu promptly devours it. The mayor explains, He's guarding this store. I just came to give him some food. Nami, observing the surroundings, adds, You're right. Now that I'm looking carefully, it's a store. She peers behind Shu Shu and realizes, I see, it's a pet food store. The mayor reflects, smoking on his pipe. The owner of this place was my friend, and ten years ago, he opened this store with Shu Shu. The precious store is filled with cherished memories for the two although I like it too. He recounts a memory of his dear friend filled with nostalgia. Listen, when I'm not here, you're the owner. Don't eat our stock. The storekeeper laughed, patting Shu Shu's head as the white dog barked in response. The mayor of the town sits down at the entrance of the pet store, his eyes fixed on the contented dog devouring its food. He examines the wounds on the white dog and asserts, Look at these wounds. They're definitely from fighting with those pirates and protecting this store. Nami, intrigued but skeptical, questions the mayor. But then no matter how precious it is, how can someone make a dog guard a store with pirates as the enemy? The store owner is with the other people at the shelter, right? Smoking on his pipe, the mayor takes a moment as his eyes gleam through the smoke. Boodle speaks up. No, he's already gone to the next world because of a sickness. Three months ago, he was hospitalized. Boodle remembers the unfortunate event. The storekeeper, while packing his suitcase, prepares to leave the building. 
As he steps outside, he finds his loyal dog standing in front of the pet store. The storekeeper entrusted Shushu a task. While I'm in the hospital, you look after the store, Shushu, he had told the faithful dog. Nami, contemplating the situation as she comments, could it be that the dog's been here since then, just waiting for his owner to return? Boodle, puffing out a whiff of smoke, responds with insight. That's what everyone says. But I see it in a different way. Since Shushu's an intelligent dog, he knows that his owner's already passed away. Luffy watches the dog intently. Nami's curiosity persists as she questions further. Then why still guard the store? The mayor, taking another drag from his pipe, explains, Obviously, this store is a treasure to Shushu. He loved his owner so much, and since this is the only property left by the owner, I think he'll continue to guard this store. Puffing out smoke, he adds, It's an unendurable thing. I tried to take him into the shelter a few times, but he won't take a step away from this place. He'd stay here even if he starves to death. Nami smiles warmly as she watches the dog finish its meal. Suddenly, a bellowing roar echoes through the air. Richie the lion, known for his menacing presence, emanates a sense of dread. Nami and Boodle look at each other, their faces filled with disbelief and panic. Nami shivers as she exclaims, What? What is that roaring noise? The mayor, confirming their fears, urgently warns, It's him! The beast tamer Moji! Run away! Boodle and Nami take off in haste, leaving Shushu and Luffy behind. Luffy, still confined in his cage, addresses the dog. Now something's coming up. Give me the key, you little thing. Shushu, standing guard, looks at him and barked in response. Moji and Richie, the fearsome duo, arrive on the scene. Moji, seated atop Richie's back, confidently announces his presence. Well, I found one guy. I'm Buggy's pirate crew member, the beast tamer, Moji. The lion growls menacingly, fixating its gaze on its prey. He continued, so the people you were with just ditched? Poor thing, and you tried so hard to run away? Captain Buggy is pretty mad. You guys have committed a pretty serious crime. Luffy provokes him. What's that weird hood you're wearing? Mocking Moji's peculiar white hairstyle. Infuriated, Moji replies angrily. You idiot, watch what you're saying. This is my hair, he points out. However, Luffy pressed against him. That just makes it even weirder. The beast tamer demands, shut up. Don't think you're safe just because you're in the cage. You don't seem to know how scary I can be. Hidden behind a nearby house, Nami and the mayor watch the scene unfold, their worry evident. Boodle remarks, he, he's taunting Moji, that idiot. Moji then points towards Shushu, issuing a challenge. I'm telling you, there is no animal in this world that won't obey me. That includes that dog over there. Confidently, he walks up to the dog and commands it to shake its paw, but Shushu bites his hand instead. Unfazed by the dog's resistance, Moji hops back onto Richie and belittles Luffy. You're just a nameless common thief. Luffy retorts simply, you gave up on the dog? Both Moji and the lion fix their gaze on Luffy, exuding a menacing aura. The beast tamer declares, I have no reason not to kill you. He interrogates him, tell me where Rorano Azoro is. Gritting his teeth, Luffy defiantly denies him. I don't want to. With a beckoning call, Moji commands his beast, Kill him, Richie! The lion lunges at the iron cage, tearing it apart with its powerful jaws. Nami, taken aback, exclaims in surprise, The steel cage! The mayor, realizing the danger, mutters, Crap! That kid's gonna die! The lion's forceful attack sets Luffy free from the cage for a brief moment. However, it sent him flying into a nearby house, demolishing it in the process. Unfazed, the beast tamer comments, that was instantaneous. He talks back to me and that's what he gets. He then focuses his attention on Richie, instructing him, Okay, Richie, let's go find Roronoa Zoro, because if I kill him, I'll earn an even better reputation. The lion growls aggressively, while Moji notices a familiar scent. What's up? Look at that. It's a pet store. Goodness, Richie. Hurry up and finish your meal. Shushu holds his ground, bravely guarding the pet store, growling back head-on against the formidable lion's gaze as they approach the pet store. Luffy, with his straw hat, sitting up amidst the rubble, expresses his surprise. What a shock. I ended up all the way here on the other side. With determination, he proclaims, But now I'm out of that stuffy cage. After I get rid of those people, I'm gonna make Nami the thief my navigator.
The aftermath of the attack left Luffy standing, seemingly unharmed. The mayor, astonished by his resilience, couldn't help but express his disbelief. Wow, how are you still alive, kid? He exclaimed with awe. Nami, still grappling with shock, chimed in, echoing the mayor's sentiment. Yeah, how in the world are you alive? She questioned. Perplexed by their reaction, Luffy responded calmly. Is that a bad thing? He asked, trying to make sense of their astonishment. Nami gestured towards the demolished house nearby. You were blasted clear through an entire house and don't have a scratch on you. It's freakish, she exclaimed. Nonchalantly, Luffy placed his hand on his hat, shrugging off the extraordinary feat. I'm fine with that, he replied. The old man couldn't contain his curiosity any longer. Why are you even here anyway? What's your connection to those pirates? He inquired. Without missing a beat, Luffy replied with a wide grin. If you need a reason, I just came up with one, he declared. I want that map to the Grand Line and a navigator, he stated. As the conversation unfolded, the dog stationed nearby began to bark vehemently, sensing danger. The dog's barking intensified as Richie, accompanied by Moji, inched closer to the pet shop. Moji, intrigued by the dog's protective behavior, the beast tamer turned to Shushu, seeking an explanation. What's with the dog? Is it trying to keep us from entering that store? He asked curiously. The dog continued barking, holding its ground against the approaching intruders. The beast tamer, growing annoyed, commented, Don't tell me that you're a guard dog for this tiny little shop, he sneered with skepticism. As the tension mounted, the lion growled menacingly, challenging the dog's defiance. However, the barks grew louder, trying to defend his beloved home. In a swift motion, the pink-maned lion swatted its massive paw at Shushu, leaving a bloody bruise on the dog's face and sending it tumbling away. Shushu fought against the force, managing to halt his slide and growled in rage, furious at the unfairness of the situation. Meanwhile, Moji and Richie reached the porch of the shop, triumphantly crossing the dog's boundary. But as the dog continued barking, it recalled memories of its time spent together with its master, the one who had entrusted it with guarding the shop. Look, Shushu, it's finished, the storekeeper had once praised. Starting today, let's work together to make this pet food shop a success, he had proposed, his words filled with hope. Shushu had acknowledged his master's trust and made a promise to protect their shared dream. Now, with a sudden leap, Shushu raced towards Richie, clenching its teeth onto the lion's leg. However, the lion looked at the dog with disgust and threw it against the window, shattering the glass. The memories of Shushu's unwavering loyalty flooded back as the dog refused to back down, holding onto its treasured memories. Amidst the chaos and fierce battle, Shushu's mind wandered back to moments shared with his master. He remembered conversations they had while bathing together, the storekeeper's words of encouragement during slow sales, and their playful banter about eating dog food. Sitting down with his master, his loyal and casual-dressed friend Boodle approached. Sensing his companion's hardship, Boodle made a compassionate offer. Looks like you have it rough. All right, I'll eat it. Sell it to me, he said, displaying a camaraderie that only true friends share. Shu Shu and his master laughed together with amusement. I guess if you look like a dog, you might as well eat dog food, chief. Boodle's attempt at sympathy didn't go unnoticed as the mayor jokingly scolded him. I was trying to give you a little sympathy, idiot revealing their close-knit friendship. On the balcony above, Richie and Moji tried to approach the entrance, only to be met with Shushu's unwavering resistance. Bloodied and beaten, the white dog stood firm, his fangs bared in defiance. Even in the face of defeat, Shushu refused to surrender, holding on to his treasure and the memories of his owner. Moji, impressed by the dog's indomitable willpower, couldn't help but comment on it. Oh, brave, he's still standing his ground. What, is your favorite food in there? He asked mockingly. Shushu's mind wandered once again, back to the cherished moments spent with his master. Memories of their triumphs and struggles filled his thoughts. The joy of selling pet food, the scolding for devouring the merchandise, the pride and joy his master took in him. And above all, he remembered the promise made his master entrusting him with the responsibility of the shop while he was hospitalized. 
Fueled by his treasure, Shu Shu barked defiantly, leaping forward to engage the frustrated lion in battle once again, refusing to let his owner's legacy be forgotten. Luffy, having concluded his conversation with the mayor, decided, I'm going to go check on Zoro. I think that weird costume guy was looking for him, he casually said. The mayor, realizing the peril that awaited him, urgently warned Luffy to stop. Stop, you fool! That lion will eat you for sure this time, he shouted, his voice filled with concern and fear. As the lion tightened its grip on a bag of pet food, Moji inspected his hand, blood oozing from the teeth marks left by Shu Shu's bite. Anger painted his face as he complained about the audacity of the shopkeeper for leaving a guard dog to thwart their progress. That damn dog bit me! Look at this! I'm bleeding! The shopkeeper sure has some nerve, leaving a guard dog to stop me, he grumbled as they both walked off. As Luffy approached the pet store ready for an attack, shock washed over him as he beheld the sight before him. The once vibrant and lively shop was now engulfed in raging flames, reducing it to a pile of ash. Shushu, devastated by the loss of his greatest treasure, howled in tears, watching as the fire burned brightly before him with the memory of his beloved master haunting his every cry. The pet store, his promised heartfelt treasure, is now reduced to a wall of flames. Recalling how the white dog honors his master, Luffy watches Shushu as it cries helplessly against the inferno. The sun cast long shadows as Moji and his loyal lion Richie walked away from the store. Their casual stroll was interrupted when they came face to face with a familiar figure standing defiantly in their path. It was Luffy, his arms folded across his chest, radiating confidence. Moji, driven by murderous intent, couldn't contain his surprise. Hey, it's you, but didn't I already kill you? He proclaimed with arrogance. Luffy responded calmly. You can't kill me that easily. I'm a rubber man after all. The beast tamer scoffed at Luffy's claim, mocking his supposed luck. Rubber man, he sneered. Now you've got quite some luck, I'll give you that. But I think you must have hit your head. I mean, you're talking nonsense. With a swift motion, Moji leaped off Richie's back and commanded the lion to attack. Showing your face here again was a huge mistake. His voice filled with rage. Chomp his head off! But Luffy, bracing himself, countered Moji's threat. He twisted both of his hands in a spiral as if forming a spring. You think a puny lion can kill me? He challenged, a mischievous grin forming on his face. Moji's eyes widened in disbelief as Luffy's hands grasped the edges of Richie's majestic mane. What? What the? His hands! Moji yelled. Luffy's voice boomed as the lion spun in circles. Gomu, Gomu, no! He yelled. His words trailed off as he leaned forward, slamming Richie onto the ground with a powerful blow. Hammer! As Richie crashed to the ground, Moji's world shattered. Richie? What? Just what? The hell are you? He cried out, his voice filled with a mix of horror and confusion. Luffy revealed. I ate the rubber rubber fruit when I was a kid, he explained. Moji, trembling with fear, realized the gravity of the situation. The rubber rubber fruit? Then you, you have a devil fruit power just like Captain Buggy. Panicked, Moji offered anything and everything to save himself. Oh, okay, I'll give you as much treasure as you want. Please forgive me, I'm sorry, he desperately pleaded. But Luffy, with a burning hatred in his eyes, knew that no amount of treasure could undo the past. There's no more need to apologize, he declared, his voice cold. Nothing you can possibly do will bring that dog's treasure back now. I came back here to kick your ass. Quickly stretching his arm, Luffy seized Moji's white fur coat. Learn your lesson, he declared, his arm retracting back towards him with the beast tamer. Stop! Moji bellowed, his cries falling on deaf ears. Luffy's right hook connected with devastating force, smashing Moji's head into the unforgiving ground. The pet store lay in ruins, consumed by a pile of ash. As the smoke billowed into the sky, Shu Shu, the dog who had once called it home, watched in sorrow and despair. Nami, accompanied by the mayor, stood in silence, her face contorted with disgust. They're all the same, 
Pirates are all the same. They just take everything people hold dear, she spat out. Luffy, entering the scene, caught the brunt of Nami's animosity. I see you're alive, pirate. I was certain you would be eaten by that lion, she sneered. Boodle, unable to remain silent, interjected, Hey, how can you say that? But Nami, fueled by her hatred for pirates, refused to back down. She was about to confront Luffy when the mayor stepped in, holding her tightly, preventing her from striking out. I'll kill you here and now before you get the chance to gather crewmates and attack towns like this one, Nami hastily yelled, her voice filled with a seething rage. The mayor, desperate to restore order, intervened. Hey, stop it, girl, he pleaded, his words falling on deaf ears. Luffy, observing her for a brief moment, retorted, As if you could beat me. Pissed off, Nami's voice thundered, What? Let's find out, shall we? Boodle, trying to calm the situation, pleaded, Would you two cut it out already? Undeterred, Luffy walked away from the commotion. Luffy approached Shushu. He placed a bag of pet food promptly in front of the white dog. Nami watched with surprise, her anger momentarily quelled. Luffy sat down, crossing his legs, engaging in a heartfelt exchange with the dog. This was the only thing left. He ate all the rest, Luffy said. Nami, observing the scene, felt a flicker of confusion. He, he went to fight that lion just for the dog, she thought to herself. Luffy, his voice filled with warmth, praised Shu Shu's bravery. You did good. You put up quite a fight, he exclaimed, his words conveying genuine respect. Shushu grabbed his food as he left his post and walked off. The dog glanced back at Luffy, barking its gratitude for the straw hat boy's deeds. Luffy, with a smile on his face, reassured the dog, Yeah, good luck to you too. Nami, still grappling with her conflicting emotions, couldn't help but wonder why Luffy acted in such an unexpected manner, defying the stereotypes of a typical pirate. On top of the pub, Buggy, the eccentric captain of a crew of misfits, questioned the unbelievable news. Moji was defeated, he exclaimed. His crew, echoing his shock, confirmed the news. Yes, captain, they responded in unison. Buggy's laughter erupted, a cacophony of madness and triumph. Prepare all the remaining special Buggy balls, he commanded, his voice a mix of excitement and malice. This joke is over. We're gonna blow this town to smithereens. I'll wipe it clear off the map. The air was thick with tension as Buggy's right-hand man, Moji, struggled to catch his breath on the cold, hard floor. Richie, knocked out, laid next to him. So, you have returned, first mate Moji, Buggy sneered. Moji, gasping for air, managed to mutter a feeble apology. I'm very sorry, Captain Buggy. Deep down, Moji knew he had to reveal the truth, despite the consequences. I've got to tell him that guy's a rubber man, he thought to himself as his mind raced. Buggy's voice pierced the tense silence, his rage barely containing itself. What? That straw hat guy beat you up? Weren't you supposed to be fighting Zoro? The captain pressed. The beast tamer struggled as he tried to speak between desperate breaths. He replied, yes, sir. I underestimated him. His thoughts consumed by the rubber man's abilities, he mustered the strength to convey the crucial information. The truth is, he's, he's, ra, man. Suddenly, Moji's body gave in, and he passed out. Buggy's men, perplexed by the scene, exchanged bewildered glances. What was that? They wondered aloud. Moji was trying to tell us something. What was so important that he had to say it before passing out? I only heard him say, ra, man. What the hell does raw man mean? Their minds raced with unanswered questions, desperately trying to decipher the hidden message. But Buggy caught onto the faint clue amidst the chaos. I see, I take it you had a pretty carefree battle, he mused aloud, a sly smile creeping across his face. His men, recognizing their captain's understanding, breathed a collective sigh of relief. Buggy's voice boomed with authority, his frustration seeping into every word. Did that punk say rude, man? I'm pretty pissed off right now. Can we blow up this town yet? Hurry. The crew, accustomed to their captain's volatile nature, wasted no time in springing into action. Yes, yes, Captain Buggy, they responded in unison, ready to unleash chaos upon the unsuspecting town. 
outside the town, away from the impending chaos. A familiar white dog named Shushu limped its way toward the makeshift hideout where the terrified townsfolk had sought refuge. The sight of Shushu, carrying a bag of pet food in its mouth, aroused curiosity among the villagers of Orangetown. What's that over there? It's Shushu from the pet food shop, someone exclaimed, drawing the attention of the concerned crowd. They rushed towards the injured dog, their hands reaching out to comfort and tend to its wounds. I'm glad you're safe. Everyone was worried, a voice murmured amidst the collective relief. As the townsfolk tended to Shushu, a lingering worry filled the air. He looks really hurt. Those pirates must have got to him. Let's bandage him up. An old member from the town came to view. Hey, what about the mayor? He questioned. The villagers fell silent their faces clouded with concern. You're right, a resident confirmed. He did say he was going to go feed the dog, but it looks like only Shushu came back. A heavy atmosphere settled upon them as thoughts of their beloved mayor, Boodle, plagued their minds. Oh no, maybe something happened to the mayor, a worried woman voiced her fear. Another resident, determined to ease their anxieties, offered, I'm worried, I'll go check. But the old man, Wise from years of experience stopped him in his tracks. Wait, you fool! The mayor isn't stupid enough to let himself get captured by pirates, he cautioned. He knows the village better than anyone. The only problem is, he cares so deeply for this town. Too deeply. I gave him a stern warning, but who knows what he could be thinking. Back in the town, amidst the chaos and brewing tensions, Nami found herself walking towards Luffy. The weight of her earlier outburst weighed heavily on her conscience, and she mustered the courage to apologize. Sorry for yelling at you, she spoke softly, her voice laced with sincerity. Luffy looked at her for a moment, a mischievous smirk playing on his lips as he stood back on his feet. It's okay, he replied. Someone important to you was killed by a pirate. I'm sure you've got your own problems to worry about. Not that I want to hear about them. Nami's surprise melted into a casual smile, her perception of Luffy slowly shifting. Consumed with rage, the mayor, who stood tall in his heavy leather armor, boomed, I can't take it anymore. It's just not fair. Fair. It is not. Even Shushu and these kids have been fighting for us. How can I, the mayor, sit by and watch my home be destroyed without lifting a finger? Nami tried to calm him down, but Boodle, taken over by his sense of duty, refused to be silenced. There are some fights a man cannot back down from. Am I wrong, kid? He bellowed, his eyes fixed on Luffy. You're spot on, old man, Luffy smiled. Realizing the consequences of Luffy's encouragement, Nami couldn't help but shout at him in frustration. Don't egg him on. Undeterred by Nami's reprimand, Boodle began to recount the history of the town his voice brimming with nostalgia. It all started 40 years ago, he exclaimed, his words reverberating through the streets. As he painted a vivid picture of their humble beginnings, Boodle's memories filled him with joy. This place was all but a simple wasteland. That is where it all began. Let's erect a town here and forget the old town that was destroyed by pirates, I said. At first it was nothing but a few tiny houses, but little by little the number of townspeople grew. As we worked harder and harder, the town expanded and more businesses were founded. Gripping his spear tightly, he declared boldly, And now look now, that meager village has grown into a splendid port town, a town built by all the old folks who started it years ago. We made this town. Both this town and its citizens are my treasure. What kind of mayor fails to protect his own town? I will fight! Atop the rooftop, a tense moment unfolded. Buggy, standing tall and commanding, bellowed his order. Fire the special buggy ball! The ground quivered as the explosive buggy ball tore through the air, obliterating an entire street of houses. The force was unimaginable, sending debris in all directions, sending Luffy, Nami, and Boodle dashing away from the destruction. Among the chaos, the enraged mayor cried out in anger, My house! But Luffy, his concern for his comrade overpowering his fear, anxiously added, Zoro's asleep in there. Their hearts sank as they watched the devastation caused by Buggy's rampage stretching into the far distance. 
Thick smoke billowed from the ruins as if mocking their helplessness. In the midst of the despair, the mayor's voice broke the silence with uncertainty. Is the guy with the green belt dead? Worried, Luffy bellowed, Hey, Zoro, are you alive? But Zoro, weariness evident, wearily placed his hand on his head and muttered, Talk about a rude awakening. Relief washed over Luffy as he witnessed his friend's survival. Great, you're alive! he exclaimed, unable to contain his joy. However, Nami, still perplexed by the turn of events, voiced her confusion. How can he still be alive? The weight of the situation pressed down on Boodle, his heart burdened by the destruction he had witnessed. It's like my still beating heart has been wrenched out, he exclaimed. The group turned their attention towards Boodle, his anguish drawing their focus. I will never forgive them for this, he declared with anger. I will not be crushed twice. These ruffians have no right to just show up out of nowhere and destroy the last 40 years of our lives. He rose to his feet, his proclamation echoing with the strength of a proud mayor. I am this town's mayor, and no one messes with my town without my permission. In a surge of determination, the mayor yelled, Time to settle things, as he charged forward, ready to settle the score with Buggy. However, Nami, in a desperate attempt to quell the impending recklessness, grabbed hold of his shirt. Wait, Mayor, she pleaded. Her efforts proved futile as Boodle as he kept going, unhand me, girl. With great haste, Nami tried explaining why it's stupid. What can you possibly do against guys like them? It's beyond reckless. With tears streaming down his face, the mayor responded with a shout. I know it's reckless. Luffy, Zoro, and Nami watched as Boodle's unwavering spirit surged forth. Letting go of his shirt, the mayor sprinted towards Buggy's hideout, fueled by his determination. Just you wait, Buggy the Clown! His voice carried the weight of his emotions. Stunned, Nami remarked, the mayor was crying. Luffy looked back, responding with a carefree chuckle. Really? I didn't notice. Zoro interjected, things are starting to get exciting. As Luffy joined in with him, his laughter ringing out. This is not the time to be laughing, Nami snapped. Yet Luffy's smile remained unwavering as he assured her, It's all right. I like that old man. I won't let him die. Nami challenged him about his claim. What's giving you the confidence to just stand here and laugh about it? She demanded. Luffy's response was resolute as he extended his hand towards Nami. We're going to the Grand Line. We have to go back and get that map, he proclaimed. His gaze locked with Nami's, he continued, Join my crew. You need the map, right? And your treasure. The offer hung in the air, Nami staring at his outstretched hand. Her words were curt, I refuse to become a pirate. Yet, in a moment of understanding, as her hand collided with Luffy's, she relented. Call it an alliance instead, we're both working towards our individual goals. Shot number two, Buggy's voice commanded. His crew responded in unison, confirming the all clear. The tension mounted as they readied themselves. Ready, Fi! Buggy's words were abruptly cut short as an unexpected interruption shattered the moment. Buggy the Clown! Get down here! Boodle commanded. Who is that? Buggy uttered in irritation as his gaze fixated on the defiant figure standing in his path. Both Buggy and the mayor locked eyes, their expressions seething with hostility. As Boodle stood against the marauding pirates elsewhere, Luffy, Zoro, and Nami walked towards Buggy's stronghold. Nami's voice rang out, you're going to, but that stab wound on your stomach is... Zoro dismissed her worry with a dismissive remark. It's just fine, Nami retorted. Yeah, right. Zoro's response was marked by a solemn act, placing his black bandana on his head. They've done more damage to my name than my stomach. Shall we go? Luffy cracked his knuckles in preparation for the impending clash. Yeah, let's go. Nami, resigned to their unwavering resolve, sighed in disbelief. Jeez, I give up. The dimly lit streets of Drinker Pub buzzed with anticipation as a figure adorned in a large blue and white checkered scarf with black hair concealing half of his face stood behind Captain Buggy. The mayor, Boodle, tightened his grip on his spear in front of the Buggy pirates. Gazing down with a disdainful expression, Captain Buggy sneered at the mayor. What's this? He scoffed. Did you call for me? In response, Boodle unleashed a thunderous shout challenging Buggy with all his might. I'm the village's leader, Oregon, in other words, the mayor, he proclaimed defiantly. I'm Boodle, come down here and fight me. 
Laughter erupted from Buggy's crew, mocking the mayor's audacity. Fight with the captain? Do you actually think you can win? They jeered. Undeterred, the enigmatic figure took a step forward, addressing Buggy directly. What is it, Kabahi? Buggy retorted, his attention momentarily diverted. Leaning closer to his captain, Kabaji declared, Leave those small fish to me. With a mischievous smile, he placed his hand in his mouth. The crowd erupted into cheers as Kabaji withdrew a long sword from his seemingly bottomless oral cavity, raising it high for all to see. The crewmates, fueled by excitement, hailed Kabaji's acrobatic prowess, showering him with whistles and praises. It's Kabaji's acrobat show! Kabaji leaped into the air, executing a flawless mid-air somersault before landing effortlessly on the rails of the roof. Riding on his unicycle, he balanced spinning tops on the tip of his sword, a mesmerizing display of dexterity. Addressing his captain, he confessed, Because I can't help but feel that recently my skills are starting to rust. He is known as Buggy's second crew member, the chief of staff, Kabaji the acrobat. Finish him off, Kabaji! The crewmates roared with delight. Boodle watched Kabaji intently as he held firm with his spear. Buggy interjected, ordering his chief of staff to back off. You idiot! The one he called for was me. You just stay back. The crewmates, disheartened by their captain's decision, expressed their disappointment. And we thought we would see Kabaji's acrobat show, they grumbled. Buggy shifted his attention back to the mayor, pointing an accusing finger in his direction. Hey, why are you challenging me? he demanded, his voice laced with arrogance. Do you want fame? Boodle's proud voice resounded through the air, fueled by his unwavering determination. That's stupid, he shouted defiantly. I'm here because I want to protect this village, because I want to protect my treasure. Huh? Buggy was momentarily taken aback by the mayor's response. However, his surprise quickly transformed into laughter. What an idiot, he sneered. The word treasure brings to mind the thoughts of gold, silver, and jewels. The owner has to have some sense of dignity and pride in it before calling it a treasure. Buggy's voice grew louder as he continued, The village is your treasure. What a bunch of meaningless words. The old mayor, fueled by a surge of emotions, pushed back against Buggy's words with all his might. Don't you mess with me, he roared. I never would have dreamed that I'd realize my love for this village if it hadn't been for the likes of you. Get down here right now, Boodle demanded. Disgust contorted Buggy's features as he retorted, Go down there, I don't want to. In a swift motion, he fired his white-gloved hand, seizing the mayor's neck in a vice-like grip. Employing the power of his devil fruit abilities, Buggy effortlessly lifted Boodle off the ground, his men chanting for the mayor's demise. Monster! Boodle gasped, his voice strained. In a desperate act, he pummeled Buggy's hand with his fists, attempting to free himself. What this? He cried, his bloodied mouth contorted with pain. But his efforts were in vain, as Buggy's grip only tightened, forcing crimson droplets to escape his lips. It hurts, damn it! Buggy's irritation resounded through the air. Are you an idiot hitting your own neck? The sun dipped low on the horizon, casting long shadows over the peaceful village. The air hung heavy with tension as the elderly mayor, Boodle, struggles to breathe, his neck choked by Buggy's hand midair. Tell me to come down there. Just who do you think you're talking to with such disrespect, old man? Buggy sneered, relishing in his dominance. Let me tell you who I am. Boodle fought to keep his consciousness, knowing that he had to find a way to counterattack. He couldn't afford to close his eyes, not when the fate of the village hung in the balance. Buggy continued to revel in his infamy. Soon the grand line will be within my grasp. I'm going to be the man who's got his hand on every treasure that glitters in this world. The world's treasure is mine. In this world, there is going to be no one but me who's got any treasure. Boodle's futile efforts to protect his village only fueled Buggy's amusement. The malicious pirate taunted him further. If this village means that much to you, I suppose you would be greatly honored to become dust with it, Buggy sneered, lacing with cruel satisfaction. Summoning his last bit of strength, the defiant mayor challenged Buggy, determined to stand up for his people. What the hell, you bastard? Fight me, he shouted. Buggy regarded the old man with a serious gaze. In a cold, calculated tone, he issued his command. Whatever, blow it all apart.
The order hung in the air, a deadly threat to the village and all who stood in his way. High above the ground, Boodle contested him, shouting with all his might, Don't do anything to this village! Fight me! Buggy felt a sudden strain on his arm, as if his hand had been tightly gripped. His eyes widened in surprise as he glanced down, only to see a straw-hatted figure with a grin on his face. Luffy had appeared, just in the nick of time, separating the mayor and the hand. Looking at Buggy, Luffy proclaimed, I've kept my promise. I've come to beat you. Buggy, forced by Luffy's grip, his hand went back as it reattached itself promptly. So you come without a single trace of fear by your own will? You morons, you're all so dead, he bellowed. Nami turned to Zoro, sharing her motives in this perilous situation. Listen, I don't care whether you fight or not, you guys do as you wish. I'm just here for the map and the treasure, she declared. Zoro agreed to her conditions. As Boodle regained his composure, he looked upon Luffy, Zoro, and Nami with a mix of gratitude and concern. His voice held a touch of disapproval as he questioned their return. All of you, what did you come back for? You three just stay out of this. This is my fight, he declared, gripping his spear tightly. I'm the one who must protect this village. Don't interfere, he proclaimed as the mayor lunged forward towards Buggy ready to protect his village. But Luffy had other plans. He slammed his head against the wall with incredible force, rendering the mayor unconscious with a single blow. Gasps of surprise filled the air as Boodle crumpled to the floor. His fight abruptly halted. You, you idiot. Nami's voice rang out. What the hell was that for? Why did you do that to the mayor? Proudly, Luffy responded to her outburst because he would just get in the way. Buggy and his men watched in awe, realizing they were facing an unpredictable individual. Zoro saw the logic behind Luffy's actions. That was smart thinking, he remarked. If you had left him alone, without a doubt, he would have charged recklessly. It's safer for him to be unconscious. But Nami couldn't suppress her frustration. She barked at Luffy, don't do anything unnecessary. Her words fell on deaf ears as Luffy called out to Buggy loudly, hey you. Huge, red, ugly, big nose. The declaration shocked Buggy and his crew, who were well aware of his overreaction to anything related to his nose. Even Zoro and Nami were horrified by Luffy's audacity. Buggy's fury reached its peak as he demanded his crew, fire the Buggy special cannonball, fire, be gone. As the cannon fire hurtled towards them, both the swordsman and the thief instinctively sought cover, fearing for their safety. But Luffy stood tall and proud, facing the imminent threat head on. Are you trying to get yourself killed? You idiot! Luffy, dodge it! Zoro and Nami warned him. But Luffy, brimming with confidence, responded cheerfully. Do you think that cannonball will work against me? His words carried a warning. And with that, Luffy began to suck in air, inflating himself with every passing second like a pump. Gomu, Gomu, no! Luffy exclaimed, his chest expanding into a large shape as he prepared to face the oncoming cannonball. The tension grew thicker as he unleashed his move, his voice ringing with resolve. Balloon! Caught within the grasp of Luffy's inflated form, the buggy ball ricocheted back towards its origin. Nami and the buggy pirates stood in stunned disbelief as the devastating power of the cannonball was turned against them. He bounced it back! Captain Buggy exclaimed, his voice filled with shock and disbelief. Zoro couldn't help but voice his annoyance. Could have said something sooner, he muttered, his eyes narrowing as he observed the destruction wrought by the buggy ball. The explosion tore through the pub, reducing it to nothing but rubble and debris. Amidst the chaos, Luffy stood unscathed, his infectious joy evident in his words. Their number has decreased. Shall we start? He declared triumphantly. Nami's frustration peaked as she barked at Luffy once again, struggling to comprehend his unpredictable actions. What the hell are you? Zoro contemplated the events unfolding before them. So much for blowing us up, he muttered. The scene unfolded amidst the remnants of the once lively pub, its walls reduced to rubble and smoke dissipating into the air. Luffy, Zoro, and Nami stood at the center, their eyes fixed on the destruction before them. Concerned, Nami turned to Luffy. Explain yourself. I don't understand this at all, she demanded. From the moment you fought with that lion and came back alive, this isn't humanly possible. 
how the hell did you just swell up like a balloon? Luffy responded with unbridled enthusiasm. Gomu Gomu no balloon, he exclaimed. I'm not asking for the name, Nami retorted. Buggy laughed as he and his second mate emerged from the wreckage, their bodies battered but unbowed. Surviving the onslaught of the reflected buggy ball, they rose to their feet, their eyes fixed on the trio. Buggy couldn't help but taunt them. You're chatting around making a lot of noise like you're not scared, Buggy remarked scarily. Using Richie the Lion and their fellow crewmates as shields, Kabaji added to the conversation. This is the biggest humiliation we've ever received under our pirate flag, Captain, he admitted. Buggy, unfazed by their plight, let his shields fall to the floor by his dismembered hands. I'm so mad, words fail me, he declared menacingly. From the debris, Moji stirred and slowly regained consciousness behind his captain. Confusion enveloped him as he surveyed the chaotic scene. Damn it, I was unconscious. What is this, this mess? He muttered, trying to make sense of his surroundings. Moji's voice reached Kabaji, who turned his attention to the beast tamer. Moji, so you're still alive, he stated frankly. Realizing the gravity of the situation, Moji's anger flared. Kabaji, you, what the heck did you do to Richie? He accused. Nonchalantly, Kabaji responded, his words laced with indifference. This kitten? I was afraid my clothes might get a little dirty, so I just used him as a shield, he admitted callously. The injured lion, coughing and bruised, struggled to catch his breath, prompting his master's worried cries. Hey, Richie, you okay? Luffy's presence did not go unnoticed by Moji, who felt compelled to issue a warning. The kid in the straw hat! Captain Buggy, be careful of that kid! That kid is also a devil fruit user! He's a rubber man! The revelation left Nami stunned as she turned to Luffy seeking confirmation. Luffy couldn't resist demonstrating his abilities. As he stretched his cheeks, his face contorting into a bizarre shape and casually remarked, Yeah, wanna see? Realizing the extent of his disadvantage, Buggy grasped the situation. Devil fruit. That's how he managed to bounce back the Buggy special cannonball, he realized, his hand aggressively gripping Moji's white fur coat. He seethed with anger. But Moji, if you knew that already, why the heck didn't you tell me that earlier? In a fit of rage, he hurled his first mate through the air, hurtling toward Luffy's direction. Moji desperately cried out, Get out of the way! Luffy, prepared for the attack, readied himself. You get out of the way, he retorted, delivering a powerful kick that struck Moji's face, sending him crashing into a nearby wall. Luffy's triumphant words filled the air. The fight has begun! Kabaji, undeterred by the chaos, mounted his unicycle and charged directly at Luffy. Gleaming his revenge, he introduced himself. Buggy Pirate Crew's Chief of Staff, Kabaji the Acrobat. I'll avenge the pain you've caused my crew. His sword poised to pierce Luffy's flesh, but just as the attack was about to land, Zoro stepped in, intercepting the blow with his own blade. Zoro, with his usual stoic demeanor, offered a simple remark. If it's swords, I'm all for it. Respectfully, Kabaji acknowledged the swordsman carefully. It is an honor, Roronoa Zoro. As a swordsman, I get to slay you. Luffy, noticing the damage from his earlier encounter with Buggy, suggested, Look, Zoro, I think it's better if I do it. You go take a rest. Kabaji, keenly observing Zoro's wounded state, couldn't help but sneer. It's the wound he got from fighting the captain, so he's been taking the pain to stay standing up, such a fool, he thought to himself, a smirk playing on his lips. Quickly, he shared acrobat technique fire trick as he unleashed a fiery attack, breathing flames toward Zoro's face. Skillfully, Zoro stepped back as he dodged the fiery attack. With no hesitation, Kabaji saw his opportunity and gave a swift kick to the wounded area. Zoro crumbled once more, his voice reverberating with pain. Damn it, he yelled. Kabaji's laughter filled the air as he taunted Zoro with malicious glee. What's this? I didn't even kick you that hard, did I? The word sliced through the air, adding insult to injury. You dirty bastard, aiming at the wounded area. Nami watched as they continued their fight. Unfazed, Kabaji prepared for another trick. He slammed his sword onto the ground, balancing his unicycle with an impressive display of acrobatics. Acrobat technique, murder, miss, trick, he proclaimed, the sword spinning rapidly, conjuring a swirling cloud of dust. 
The dust storm engulfed Zoro, blinding him and leaving him vulnerable. Some trick. It's just a cloud of dust, Zoro gasped, struggling to catch his breath amidst the chaos. He could feel the clash of their swords as he desperately fought against Kabaji's relentless assault. With a burst of strength, Zoro managed to block the attack, but it was short-lived. Once again, Kabaji's foot found its mark, striking Zoro's poorly bandaged wound with great force. Zoro collapsed, the world spinning in a haze of anguish as he screamed in pain. Nami's voice echoed. That bastard did it again, she said with frustration. Kabahi, reveling in his opponent's misery, mocked the fallen swordsman. What's wrong? A grown man rolling around crying out loud is absolutely pathetic to watch. Luffy stood silently, his eyes fixed upon the unfolding spectacle. Kabaji turned to Zoro. Because of your partner's odd power, we've suddenly gone to pieces. Even though you're a pirate hunter, making the buggy pirate crew your enemy was a big mistake. The weight of the situation hung heavy in the air, the floor stained crimson with Zoro's blood. Nami pleaded with Luffy, urgency coloring her voice. Fighting with that injury was already too much from the start. Why are you just watching with a silent stone face? That guy's gonna die. But Luffy remained motionless. With a final surge of determination, Kabaji launched his ultimate attack. Roranoa Zoro, go to the next world, he declared, his voice filled with triumph. Yet against all odds, Zoro found the strength to rise. Using the handle of his katana, he knocked Kabaji aside. As Kabaji fell to the floor, Zoro turned to face him with disgust. What an annoying guy! Do you find tearing up my wound that much fun? With a swift, decisive motion, Zoro cut himself once more in the same wound, the sight leaving those in the background in stunned silence. Gathering his resolve, Zoro took a deep breath his voice steady and unwavering. My goal is to become the world's greatest swordsman, his declaration hung in the air. What the hell? Kabaji retorted. Zoro placed his white katana between his teeth, his voice muffled but determined. Is my condition now satisfying enough for you? He challenged. Let me teach you the difference in skill between us. Luffy, impressed by Zoro's unwavering resolve, couldn't help but voice his admiration. So cool, he exclaimed, his words filled with genuine awe. Kabaji, angered by Zoro's defiance, accepted the challenge. Roronoa Zoro, you impudent fool! Within the battlefield, Zoro, his body covered in wounds and his clothes stained with blood, stood tall and resolute, facing off against Kabaji, Buggy's chief of staff. Luffy cheered his swordsmen on, while Nami, the astute navigator, observed the scene with a heavy sigh. Just looking at him makes me feel like he's going to collapse any second, Nami murmured, her eyes fixed on Zoro's battered form. Zoro tells the acrobat, I won't allow myself to lose to anyone, who calls himself a swordsman, not even once. Kabaji sneered in response, acknowledging Zoro's words. You've got a strong determination there, but don't worry. Fighting me with such a serious injury, you can use that as an excuse when I defeat you. Zoro bristled, his three swords at the ready. Nonsense! With this sort of injury, if I lose against the likes of you, my future carries an obvious fate. You asshole! Kabaji retorted, his eyes fixed on his opponent, while Captain Buggy observed their battle with uncertainty. Meanwhile, Nami whispered to Luffy, catching his attention. Hey! Behind the destroyed pub, there's a warehouse! She informed him, pointing discreetly. Their treasure is there, and the Grand Line map is probably still with Buggy. Since the pirates are still unconscious, I'll use the moment to slip over there. After I acquire the warehouse's treasure, I'll make my escape. Nami began to walk away, explaining her plan to Luffy. Whether you win the fight or not has nothing to do with me. But if you actually manage to fulfill your part and get the map, let's cooperate again when that happens. Then I should go. I wish you a good fight, she said, disappearing into the alleyways. Okay, thanks, Luffy agreed. Back in the midst of the battle, Zoro and Kabaji clashed relentlessly. Kabaji unleashed his acrobatic skills, utilizing three spinning tops in his hand. Take a taste of the best trick that I have. Acrobat technique, 100 tops typhoon, he declared. Launching several tops at Zoro, he proclaimed his next move. Acrobat technique, wall riding. 
As if defying gravity, he rode his unicycle up a nearby wall. However, Zoro managed to deflect all the tops, his swords moving with precision. Observing from below, Luffy exclaimed, Whoa, that's high! Kabahi leaped high into the air, preparing for a downward strike. Acrobat technique! Midsummer firecrackers ignition! He shouted, aiming to pierce Zoro with his sword. Direct stab! But before Kabaji could land his attack, Buggy, using his devil fruit powers, launching his hand towards Zoro, intending to grab him. Ground runner, Barabara bara, no cannon! Buggy shouted, Kabaji, I'll hold him in place, so finish Zoro off. Zoro panicked, realizing his dire situation. That bastard! Luffy swiftly intervened, stepping on Buggy's hand with his foot, causing the captain to recoil in pain. Don't interfere with Zoro's fight, Luffy proclaimed, his eyes gazed towards Buggy. You asshole! Buggy shouted, nursing his injured hand. Undeterred, Kabaji pressed on with arrogance. Even without the captain's help, finishing you off will be a piece of cake, he sneered. Zoro, his body weary and drained from his wounds, dodged the incoming blow as he spoke up. Stop now! I'm tired, Kabaji interrupted, mocking the swordsman. You're tired, he laughed. Are you getting anemia? You've finally given up. Well, I suppose it was obvious. I mean, it's a substantial effort you make just to stay standing. In a swift motion, Zoro kicked Kabaji off his unicycle, regaining his composure. He stared the acrobat down deadly with intense focus. I meant I'm tired of being the opponent of someone who has such pitiful skills. Kabaji, refusing to back down, dashed toward Zoro. Then let me finish you off with my real sword skills! Zoro poised his two swords, the blades pointing upward as he gripped his third katana tightly in his mouth. Oni! he bellowed. As their blades clashed, Zoro struck with lightning speed. Giri! Kabaji staggered backward, cut in multiple angles. In pain and frustration, he uttered his final words. Damn it! The world's best pirate crew defeated by the likes of a common thief! So shameful! With that, he collapsed to the ground, defeated and humiliated. Not a common thief! Zoro spoke with a hint of pride, his words echoing through the deserted landscape. His weary body descended to the ground, a momentary respite from the battles that had left him breathless. But a pirate, he proclaimed. Lying on the ground, Zoro tells his captain, Luffy, I'm gonna sleep. Luffy observed his friend with admiration. With a reassuring smile, he offered his unwavering support. Yeah, you sleep. I'll finish this off, Luffy declared, his fists clenched as if preparing for an imminent showdown. The sudden realization struck Buggy like a bolt of lightning, his eyes widening in disbelief. You mean you guys are pirates, he exclaimed. Luffy, undeterred by Buggy's shocked reaction, confirmed their status as pirates and added a new demand. Hand over the Grand Line map, he commanded. The red-nosed captain scoffed with skepticism in response. So that was your goal? That place isn't exactly somewhere nameless pirates like yourself can go as they please, Buggy retorted. So what are you planning to do there? You want to go have a sightseeing tour? Luffy's reply was simple, but brimming with ambition. I'm going to become the Pirate King, he declared. Buggy, unable to contain his astonishment, bellowed in protest. Don't kid around, you idiotic fool. You become Pirate King, then I'm a god. The person who'll get his hands on all the treasure in the world will be me. Don't even dream about it. His voice reverberated through the air. Luffy silenced Buggy's tirade, his voice firm and commanding. Shut up, skip the lecture and let's start, he snapped, tightening his grip in preparation for the impending clash. You're being too loud, you idiot. As the tension escalated and battle loomed on the horizon, Buggy interjected with a sly remark. His knives gleamed ominously, poised on the edges of his fingers. Watch your mouth, Gomu Gomu. Seeing your straw hat reminds me of a guy I knew from a long time ago. That impudent red-haired guy, he taunted, his irritation seeping through his words. Red-haired? Luffy echoed. The battleground was strewn with fallen bodies, each pirate defeated or rendered unconscious, except for one figure lying on the ground. Zoro appeared surprisingly at ease as he peacefully slept amidst the chaos. Luffy approached the pirate known as Buggy with a curious expression on his face. Red-haired? Luffy questioned with intrigue. Do you know Shanks? 
Buggy pondered the question, his gaze fixed on the straw hat in Luffy's possession. What's this? It seems you're quite interested, Buggy replied. I do know him, but why do you want to know? Unyielding in his pursuit, Luffy pressed further. Where is he now? Buggy chuckled mischievously, his hand still caressing his chin. Where? Well, if I knew, then I know, he hinted playfully, a smile creeping onto his face. And if I don't know, then I could also not know anything at all. Luffy's casual expressed himself. What are you even saying? He asked. Are you an idiot? Buggy's temper flared, his patience running thin. What do you mean, idiot, you uncivilized buffoon? He shouted with rage. Drawing his knives menacingly on the gaps of his fingers, he confronted Luffy. I'm saying that I'm not a nice enough guy to tell you information that you want to know, even if it's your last wish before you die. Luffy clenched his fist. Then let me make you say it by force, he declared, readying himself for a fight. Buggy laughed heartily, his red clown shoes stomping against the ground. As he did, blades sprung out from his footwear. Before you hear it, you're going to be dead, Buggy warned, a smirk playing on his lips. Even though you're made of rubber, there are still some things that won't bounce off you. That's right, Luffy nodded. Buggy braced himself, taking a fighting stance. Barra, barra, no! Windmill! He shouted, sending his lower half spinning toward Luffy with deadly intent. Reacting swiftly, Luffy leapt into the air, narrowly evading the attack as it whizzed past him. Seeing Luffy airborne, Buggy pointed accusingly. Moving here and there in the air is most likely impossible, he exclaimed, launching a barrage of knives in Luffy's direction. However, Luffy, utilizing his rubber-like abilities, stretched his arm towards a lamppost attached to a nearby building. Why not? He smirked, pulling himself out of harm's way with a deft maneuver. Amused by Luffy's resilience, Buggy retorted, So you can do things like that? How interesting! His eyes locked with Luffy's. The two pirates prepared for their clash. Luffy responded with a confident smile. You're an interesting person, too. Gomu, Gomu, no! Pistol! He exclaimed, launching a powerful punch towards Buggy. With agility, Buggy moved to the side, sightly, seizing the opportunity to strike at Luffy's stretched arm. However, his focus on the arm made him unaware of Luffy's continued momentum as the punch stretched past him. An arm that stretched to its limit is full of weaknesses. I'll tear it to shreds, Buggy declared as he aimed his blade directly at his extended arm. In a surprising turn of events, Luffy grabbed hold of a windowsill, using it as leverage for another attack. Gomu, Gomu, no! Scythe! He shouted, launching himself forward. Buggy swiftly activated his Bara Bara No emergency escape, his head detaching from his body to evade the attack. Luffy's assault ended with a crashing impact as he crashed into the ruins of a nearby house. Buggy reconnected his head to his body, laughing at Luffy's perceived weakness. You're not much of a threat, Gomu Gomu, he taunted. Emerging from the rubble unscathed, Luffy leaped back into action. Damn! Separating into sections, he pondered, assessing the situation with a determined gaze. Nami, having successfully stolen the treasure, watched the scene unfold from a safe distance, her heart pounding in disbelief at the sheer power and intensity of the fight. How, how is it possible for such a fight? She pondered to herself, barely. I feel as though I'm dreaming. Elsewhere, some of Buggy's remaining crew members, scattered among the rubbled remains of a once lively pub, began to exchange hushed whispers. Hey, did you just see that? One pirate murmured. Idiot, pretend you fainted, the second pirate hissed, his voice filled with fear. We've got no chance of living if, if we get caught up in a fight like that. Not noticing their whispers, Buggy launched another vicious attack, his voice booming through the chaos. Barra Barra no cannon, he proclaimed, his arm shot like a gun with three deadly knives holding on to it. Swiftly, Luffy grabbed the hand just in time, but Buggy wasn't finished yet. Separate, he shouted as he detached half of hand. Luffy managed to evade the initial strike, but one of the knives grazed the side of his face, leaving a deep gash. To his horror, the blow also pierced his beloved straw hat. Falling to the ground, blood trickling from his wound, he glared at Buggy with anger. You bastard, Luffy growled. Buggy, reveling in his victory, couldn't resist mocking his wounded opponent. What? 
So you're pissed that your face is scarred? He sneered with a cruel, sadistic smirk. Luffy's eyes burned with rage as he clutched his hat tightly in his hands. How dare you mess up this hat? He bellowed. This is my treasure. I will never forgive anyone who messes up this hat. Nami, hidden in the background, watched with wide eyes as Luffy's emotions overflowed. She recalled how he had mentioned that the straw hat was a gift from a dear friend, and she couldn't help but be surprised at the depth of his attachment to it. I thought he was the type of guy who wasn't bothered by anything, she mused to herself, but he looks really furious now. Buggy, sensing an opportunity to taunt Luffy further, pressed on. Is the hat that precious to you? He jeered. Yeah, you bastard! Luffy roared, his fists clenched tightly, ready to strike back. But before Luffy could make his move, Buggy's detached hand floated behind him. Luffy's instincts kicked in, and he lapped away, narrowly avoiding the attack while desperately protecting his treasured hat. His hand aimed directly towards the straw hat, as Buggy relishes in his sadistic triumph, gloating, If it's that precious to you, then why don't you protect it properly? In that moment, everything seemed to darken for Luffy as the knives collided at the top of his straw hat. The world around him faded as he was consumed by his memories. He remembered the promise he had made to Shanks, the one who had gifted him this very hat. The weight of that promise and the significance of the hat became clear in his mind. As Buggy collected his dismembered hand, he held the hat up, the knives piercing through the worn fabric. Luffy's heart pounded in his chest as the memories flooded back. This hat was Shanks' favorite hat, his mentor and his inspiration. Luffy had vowed to return it to him when he became a great pirate himself. Enraged, Luffy declared, That's the hat I swore myself with Shanks, as he dashed towards him. The intensity of his words startled even Buggy, who suddenly felt a twinge of regret. What? This is Shanks' hat? Buggy exclaimed, his voice tinged with surprise. I thought it looked familiar. He spat on the hat. Me and that guy used to be in the same pirate ship. To rephrase that, he was my comrade when we were still pirate trainees. Luffy's eyes burned with rage. Shanks is a great man, he declared. You say that he was your comrade? With a burst of adrenaline, he lunged forward, his fist aimed squarely at Buggy's face. But Buggy, ever the opportunist, knew when to retreat. He activated his Barra Barra no emergency escape separating his head from his body and cackling with laughter. However, Luffy's rage was unstoppable. With a powerful surge of strength, he landed a furious punch directly into Buggy's stomach, causing the detached head to cry out in pain. Reconnecting his head to his body, Buggy's defeated form plummeted to the ground, sent by the force of Luffy's devastating blow. Burning bright with rage, Luffy's gaze fell upon his tampered straw hat. Damn it! He remarked, how dare you treat my treasure like that? Bent over and looming over Buggy, Luffy stretched his cheeks, contorting with anger. You even spat on it, he growled with fury. That's dirty, stop it, Buggy desperately protested. Luffy's glare intensified, his eyes locked onto Buggy's trembling figure. Shanks being your comrade, don't you dare repeat those words ever again, he warned aggressively. But Buggy stubbornly persisted as his face was stretched and pulled by Luffy. Huh, even though I don't know what sort of relationship you had with Shanks, it's my own choice how I can speak of him, he spat defiantly. Take this, Barra Barra no. Buggy's words were abruptly cut short as Luffy swiftly halted his retaliation. Stay still, Luffy demanded as he brought his hand down, delivering a powerful chop against Buggy's head. The impact echoed through the air, leaving Buggy's crew sprawled on the ground in disbelief. Hey, isn't our captain kind of losing? One of the Buggy pirates whispered to his comrade. Don't, don't say such stupid things. Do you think Captain Buggy will actually lose? Captain's real skills will start now. Most likely, the other pirate whispered back as they pretended to be knocked out. As the intense battle unfolded, Nami watched from the shadows. Suddenly, a realization struck her with clarity. I was so fascinated, I kept on watching, she muttered to herself. I've got to quickly steal the warehouse treasure and run away. 
her determination ignited as her eyes darted around the area, looking for the perfect moment to make her move. Outside the town, in the safety of the villagers' shelter camp, worry gripped the hearts of the villagers. A palpable sense of unease settled among them as they anxiously questioned the absence of their mayor. It's too strange, they murmured. It's been so long and the chief still hasn't returned. Poro, an old man known for his wisdom, voiced his disapproval. That man, making the townspeople worry, he replied. The villagers exchanged worried glances. Something's definitely happened in the village, one of them murmured. Yeah, another agreed. And we've also heard a couple of cannon noises. Poro stepped forward proudly. All right, he declared with resolve. I'm going to go check out the village and return shortly. You all wait here. But his noble intentions were met with opposition as a concerned villager interjected. You mustn't go alone. I'll go too, he insisted. The old man's tone turned harsh. Fool, the ones at the village are pirates. Buggy's crew is known for being low and dirty, he warned, desperately trying to dissuade them. However, upon hearing the warning, the villagers started to gather makeshift weapons. That's why we really have to go, one of them declared. If we can't protect our own chief, how can anyone call us villagers? It's useless to try and stop us, since it's a voluntary action we're all taking. Poro turned to face the determined crowd. After a moment of contemplation, he gave a weary sigh of approval. Do whatever you want, he grumbled. The townspeople, united in their cause, began to chant, their collective spirit pulsing through the air. Back in the chaotic streets of Orangetown, Boodle laid unconscious, a victim of Luffy's quick thinking. Filled with anguish and disgust, Buggy explained, Throughout my whole life, even until today, there has not been a single person who has made me madder than he did, he declared. Luffy, his curiosity piqued, regarded Buggy intently, waiting for the clown pirate's next words. That bastard, he... He took a tremendous amount of treasure from me. I can't forgive him, Buggy shouted. Memories flooded his mind, and he began to explain their shared history, a flashback transporting them back to their days as young pirates. On a mighty pirate ship, chants seemed to surround the air as laughter erupted. Oh, they're fighting again, the pirates roared in amusement. Fight, 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 don't lose to each other. Buggy tugged on Shanks's shirt, and vice versa, their rivalry reaching new heights. It's the North Pole, Buggy declared confidently. Shanks, never one to back down, contested, no, it's the South Pole. The argument over which pole was colder continued unabated. You're still insisting on that, moron, Buggy pushed with frustration. But Shanks fired back, of course, I'm telling you I'm right. Just as the tension reached its peak, a senior member of the crew intervened. With clean-cut strawberry blonde hair, a moderate amount of facial hair and glasses perched on his nose, he stepped in and put an end to their bickering by forcefully banging their heads together. Enough is enough, he demanded with authority. You two always gonna fight or what? I can't see why whether the North Pole or the South Pole is colder has to do with you. If you want to know so badly, go to both places and check for yourself, idiots. As the crew laughed around them, Meanwhile, a lookout stationed on the crow's nest called out to the crew, A vessel is coming from the northwest! The pirates quickly readied themselves for a fight. Okay, attack, let's start the action, they shouted, preparing to face their adversaries head on. Shanks, his signature straw hat adorning his head, glanced over at Buggy and chimed in, a playful tone. Looks like you're excited. Buggy, gripping his knives tightly with both hands, raised them in delight. A vessel's the same as a treasure box, he exclaimed. The most important thing to a pirate is his loot. Shanks, sword in hand, replied, well, that's one thing. Buggy, interrupting him, vehemently stated, it's not just one thing, it's everything. Too nice, you're your own good. You and this ship's pirates don't treat treasure seriously enough. You don't know what a pirate really is. As the battle raged on deck, swords clashed and pirates fought against their adversaries. Amidst the chaos, Buggy stumbled upon a treasure map. This treasure map, 
he exclaimed with astonishment. First time seeing one. The map revealed a vast amount of treasure lying on the seabed, marked with a red X ready for the taking. Buggy couldn't believe his eyes. He was truly shocked. With a mischievous grin, Buggy hid the map away, ensuring no one could see it. No one could have seen, he thought to himself, who wouldn't keep this to themselves. Standing up, his chest puffed with pride, he cheered, from now on, my life's worries will end and happiness will come. Later that night, sailing on calm seas, the captain addressed his crew with laughter in his voice. Today we have another delightful victory, he declared. Drink, drink to your heart's content, raise your voices and sing. The pirates reveled in their triumph, their voices echoing across the sea. Shanks, leaving the wild party with a bottle in hand, approached Buggy, interrupting his thoughts. Buggy, let's celebrate together, he proposed. We found a weird treasure, too. Nervously, Buggy responded, What? What do you mean, treasure? I didn't do anything at all. I don't know anything. He was afraid Shanks might have discovered his secret treasure map. What are you talking about? Shanks questioned with confusion. The two of them sat down, gazing out at the gentle seas. Buggy couldn't help but smile. We too one day will get off this ship, he said hopefully. Of course we will, Shanks replied. If I get to have my own ship, I'm planning to go around and see the world. As a pirate, of course. Buggy laughed, mocking his friend's aspirations. Talking absolute nonsense as usual. Playfully nudging Buggy with his elbow, Shanks retorted, Oh yeah? Their eyes locked and Buggy proudly proclaimed, I can understand and accept your fighting skills. If it weren't for your crazy way of thinking, I wouldn't mind taking you in as my crew member. Your follower? Like I want to be, Shanks responded, taking a swig from his bottle. Because we think so differently, we just need to travel the path that each thinks best. That's what a pirate's life is like. Laughing, Buggy replied, it's funny to hear things about pirates from your mouth, but if that happens, then when we meet each other at sea again, we'll meet as enemies. Finishing his bottle, Shanks agreed, that's just another part of a pirate's life. What the hell are you talking about? Buggy shrugged off. Hey, didn't you just say something about some weird treasure? He questioned, trying to divert the conversation. Shanks responded, yes, we've got this devil fruit. I once heard that the devil fruits are all the sea devil's incarnations. If you eat it, you'll gain a special ability, but you won't be able to swim. The captain said that whoever wants to eat it can have it. Buggy smirked, dismissing the idea. Don't want to eat that sort of thing and end up unable to swim for the rest of my life. Deep inside, Buggy held his map, a wicked grin forming on his face as he thought. Scary. Anyone who eats that sort of thing is no doubt a real idiot. If there's treasure lying on the seabed and you can't swim, then you can't go and get it. Shanks, looking out at the ocean floor, continued. But that odd fruit. Turns out it sells for around 100 million berries, if you can believe it. What? Is that true? Buggy exclaimed in shock. A hundred million is more than even ten class A treasure chests. The goddess of treasure must be smiling upon me, he thought to himself. The next morning, in front of the entire crew, Buggy proudly proclaimed, holding a pink devil fruit in his hand. Pirate trainee Buggy, he will eat the devil's fruit. The crew cheered him on, reveling in his youthful spirit. Being young is a wonderful thing since you can be so carefree. Good going, Buggy. I have more respect for you now. In a swift motion, Buggy swallowed the devil fruit whole. His fellow crewmates eagerly asked, so how is it, Buggy? Feel any difference in your body? Buggy sighed, looking down at his stomach. No, not really, he told them, pretending to be disappointed. What? Was it a fake? The crewmates speculated. Well, the story of the devil fruit was a rumored story from the start, they reasoned. Unbeknownst to them, Buggy smiled to himself as he pondered the truth. You've got it exactly right. What I just ate was a fake fruit I spent all night working on and switching. That night, Buggy made secret plans with glee. Everything turned out as planned. I don't need to be a pirate trainee anymore. I better get off this ship before anyone finds out. With the money from selling the fruit and the treasure from the map, I could form the best pirate crew in the world and steal the most value. Suddenly, 
Shanks appeared before him, catching Buggy off guard. Yo, Buggy, what are you doing here? Desperately, Buggy hid the devil fruit in his mouth and the map in his jacket, crouching down to the floor. Shanks observed Buggy's panicked face and questioned, Your face sure is a sight. Buggy, still holding the devil fruit in his mouth, thought to himself, What the? So it was this idiot? Scared me half to death. Buggy managed to convince Shanks to leave, and as he walked out, casually mentioning, Don't steal too much food. The cook will get mad. Buggy let out a sigh of relief, believing he was safe. But just as he relaxed, Shanks once again popped up behind him, surprising him. Oh, yeah. If I think about it, the captain just... Shocked, Buggy hastened himself, accidentally swallowing the devil fruit. Buggy was in complete shock at what he had done. He held Shanks' shirt in anger, yelling, You! You! You bastard! I! I! But before he could finish yelling at Comrade, Shanks casually pointed out, What is that? That piece of paper, referring to the treasure map that was now fluttering over the side of the ship into the sea. Realizing the map was about to be lost, Buggy panicked. My map! Without a second thought, he leaped off the ship, plunging into the water. Hey, Buggy! Shanks yelled out. Buggy struggled to swim, but his body felt strange. Help! Help! He cried, realizing that his body couldn't move properly. The sea was turning against him, confirming the stories about devil fruit users. Someone save me! Buggy desperately called for help. Up on the ship, the crew gathered, perplexed by Buggy's actions. Hey man, what are you doing? Swimming's your specialty. What the? What's going on, Shanks? What's that guy doing? With a sense of urgency, Shanks leaped off the ship, determined to save his friend. I'll save you, he shouted, seizing Buggy and pulling him back onto the ship. With frustration, Buggy continued explaining, so I ate a 100 million berry worth fruit and became unable to swim. And I also missed the treasure lying on the seabed. Luffy listened intently. Oh, so Shanks saved your life, he said with understanding. But Captain Buggy's anger only intensified. He couldn't bear to be misunderstood. I'm not talking about that part, he bellowed. Because of that idiot, my future life plans were postponed for ten years. In a fit of rage, Captain Buggy invoked the power of his devil fruit ability, his upper half detached from his lower body, hovering menacingly in the air. The sight was both captivating and terrifying. So that's why I promised myself, if I can't get anything under the sea, then I'd settle for every treasure above it with this devil fruit power, he declared. As the onlookers watched in awe, Buggy's gaze scanned the area from his elevated position. A wicked grin spread across his face, hidden beneath his colorful jester's hat. Because of that, whoever touches my treasure, whoever that is, I never... Buggy's voice trails off as he spots Nami clutching a white bag overflowing with stolen loot and glittering treasure. Leave them alive, he continued, his gaze locked onto Nami with the intention to kill. Buggy wasted no time, launching his dismembered upper half towards her, his orange cape billowing behind him in the wind. Nami's exhilaration quickly turned into panic as a familiar voice pierced through the chaos. Put my treasure down, bellowed Buggy. He flew towards Nami with alarming speed, ready to kill her at a moment's notice. Nami's eyes widened with fear as she realized the danger that loomed before her. Crap! He noticed me! She exclaimed with panic. Buggy's voice rang out again, filled with a mixture of anger and amusement. Since when did you think you could fool me, Nami? Let me send you painfully to the netherworld! He taunted the thief. Suddenly, Luffy noticed that Buggy's lower half remained motionless. He couldn't help but seize this opportunity to turn the tables on the red-nosed pirate. Desperation took hold of Nami as she desperately tried to escape her pursuer. I'm not giving you a single thing, she stated. With every step she took, Buggy's presence grew closer, his knives gleaming in his hands as he prepared for the kill. With a serious expression on his face, Luffy unleashed a swift and powerful kick to Buggy's crotch. Damn, damn you gomu gomu no kid, dare to kick my bottom half. Buggy cried out in agony as he crashed to the ground. Despite the pain, Luffy proudly reminded him, your opponent is still me. Relief washed over Nami as she realized she had been granted a momentary respite. But Luffy's concern for her safety was clear. Put that treasure down and go somewhere safer. You're going to get chased again otherwise, he demanded. However, 
Nami's attachment to her ill-gotten gains clouded her judgment. She stubbornly refused to comply with Luffy's request. Put the treasure down and go. I don't want to. Why should I leave my treasure behind? She asserted with defiance. Your treasure? Buggy scoffed. Undeterred, Nami stood her ground, proclaiming, Of course! Since I'm a pirate treasure thief and I just stole a pirate, I'm telling you this treasure is mine, she declared, as she clutched the white sack of treasure tightly. I see, Luffy acknowledged by the thief's understanding. But Buggy's anger grew with each passing moment. He couldn't fathom Nami's audacity as he questioned her. What nonsense! That treasure's mine! Do you think that if you steal it, it's yours? How the hell were you brought up? He exclaimed, his voice laced with fury. With a mischievous grin, she stuck out her tongue, opposing him delightfully. A lecture from a bad guy? Stop that nonsense, she retorted. I don't think I've done anything bad enough to be lectured by a pirate. Anger continued to bubble within Buggy as he contemplated Nami's audacity. You're prepared for this, aren't you, Nami? He sneered with malice. Without a moment's hesitation, he unleashed his devastating attack, the Bara Bara No Festival, causing his body to disassemble into a chaotic flurry of separate pieces. Nami continued to run, evading the flying body parts, as Luffy observed the scene carefully. He couldn't help but ponder the limitations of Buggy's powers. Damn it, there should be a limit to this Bara Bara. If it's like this, there's no way I can fight him, he thought. Catching a peculiar sight, Luffy's eyes watched as Buggy's feet just casually walked. His feet, seemingly unaffected by Buggy's ability, continued to walk as if detached from the rest of his body. An idea formed in Luffy's mind as he reached out and grabbed hold of Buggy's wayward foot. Buggy, consumed by anger and a thirst for vengeance, demanded the return of his treasure as he chased the thief. Give me back my treasure, he roared. Nami contested him as she kept running. I won't! she retorted. Unbeknownst to Buggy, Luffy removed one of his clown shoes, a sly grin forming on his face. With precise timing, he tickled Buggy's foot. Laughter erupted from the startled captain as he unwittingly stumbled closer to Nami. How's this? Luffy smirked, reveling in his impish victory, before firmly cracking Buggy's ticklish foot. Buggy winced but tried to suppress his pain, his focus still fixated on the chase. Nami, however, couldn't help but react with confusion and shock. Luffy persisted as he pinched Buggy's foot. You're pretty tough, he remarked. Buggy's laughter turned into agonized yells, his attempt to maintain his composure crumbling under the relentless assault. Nami ran frantically, her screams echoing through the air as the clown pursued her. The chase came to a sudden halt when Buggy, now seething with rage, demanded Luffy to cease his torment. Stop it, you idiot! He raised, stopping his tracks. Nami, her emotions running high, swung a heavy bag of treasure at Buggy. The one that's got to stop is you, she exclaimed as she unleashed a forceful blow. However, Buggy grabbed hold of the bag tightly in his hands. The treasure has been returned, he sneered with mockery. Let go, Nami insisted. But Buggy questioned her with deadly intent. Let go? The one who should let it go is you. Observing the situation unfold, Luffy dashed forward. It's my treasure! Nami's voice persisted. With both parties refusing to yield, Buggy made a desperate move, attempting to strike Nami with his sharp knives. But before he could make contact, Luffy intervened, his voice cutting through the tension. I just told you that your opponent is me! With a swift kick to the head, Buggy was sent sprawling, crashing into the bag of treasure, causing it to tear apart. Bullseye, that last kick was for the village chief, Luffy exclaimed as he wiped his blood-stained cheek. As Nami caught her breath, she looked back at Luffy. Thank you, thanks to you, I'm alive, she breathed. Luffy simply responded, don't worry about it. With Buggy momentarily incapacitated, Luffy and Nami surveyed the wreckage before them. The realization dawned upon them, and their conversation shifted toward their next objective. Oh yeah, the map, Luffy exclaimed. My treasure got scattered everywhere, Nami replied desperately. Luffy walked over to where the chaos had scattered the map of the Grand Line map. All right, I finally got it. The Grand Line map, he rejoiced. However, their moment of triumph was short-lived, as the looming captain materialized behind Luffy. With his upper half floating eerily, Buggy couldn't resist the opportunity to taunt his adversary. Wait, wait, Gomu Gomu kid. 
unbothered, Luffy replied casually, You're still alive. Buggy's declaration was swift and aggressive. I'll kill you once and for all, gather up, barabara -bara parts, he proclaimed, his attempt to reform his body into a formidable weapon. Yet his plans were shattered by a shocking realization. His hands, feet, and head were the only parts that had reassembled, leaving his body incomplete. Luffy couldn't help but look down at the diminished, small form of Buggy. With a touch of pride, Nami stepped forward, seizing the opportunity to assert her control over the situation. You wouldn't happen to be looking for these, would you? She triumphantly said, as she revealed the rest of Buggy's body parts were tightly bound with rope. Yikes! Buggy panicked. My body parts! Luffy's laughter rang out as he stretched both his arms behind him, admiring Nami's skills. A thief definitely has some cool skills. Leave the rest to me! He exclaimed with uncontainable glee. Get lost, Buggy! With those words, Luffy's rubbery limbs stretched forward, ready to deliver a decisive blow. Gomu Gomu no! Realizing the futility of his situation, Buggy's voice boomed with desperation. Stop! But his plea fell on deaf ears as Luffy's mighty attack struck with unyielding force, propelling the defeated clown pirate high into the sky, proclaiming, Bazooka! Luffy, his victory over Buggy secured, raised both hands triumphantly. With a grin, he turned to Nami. Now you're going to become my crew member, right? He questioned. Nami, clutching her satisfied stash of treasure, responded, I'm just cooperating with you while it serves my purpose. Remember that. I'll say okay for now, since it seems that if I go along with you guys, I'll be able to earn a lot. Embracing her treasure protectively, she explained further. Buggy said that he only takes the best treasure for himself, so this bag's contents are of the highest quality. This much treasure should be worth at least 10 million berries. I've divided it into two bags, so you hold half of it. This treasure is so heavy that carrying it alone is difficult. As Luffy walked towards his straw hat, he noticed the damage inflicted upon it by Buggy. Remorse flickered across his face as he picked it up, and Nami, observing him, asked sorrowfully, That hat, is it that precious to you? With a reassuring smile, Luffy replied, Yeah, but it's all right. I feel better now that I got rid of Buggy. Still stunned by their foe's resilience, Buggy's men glanced at the rookie pirates, who took down and sent their captain flying into the horizon. Hey, Captain Buggy got knocked out of sight. What should we do? They silently whispered as another chimed in. For now, let's pretend we're still passed out. Both in agreements, they settled amidst the rubble, feigning defeat. Zoro, get up. Let's go, Luffy suggested, patting Zoro's head quickly. Stirred from his slumber, Zoro roused himself and asked, still groggy, did you finish the fight? Yeah, we also got the map and the treasure. Luffy replied with satisfaction. Still struggling to shake off the drowsiness, Zoro muttered, I don't think I can walk yet. Obviously, if you guys can still walk, then you aren't human, Nami retorted sharply. Luffy glanced back at her, puzzled. Why did you include me? He questioned as she snapped back. You're the weirdest. Luffy looked behind him, looking at the unconscious leader. Oh yeah, I'll wake up the chief, he confirmed. Suddenly, a voice interrupted their exchange. You guys, we're the people of this village. Did the pirates stir up a fight amongst themselves? If you know anything, please tell us, the villagers commented, having arrived on the scene with a large crowd of citizens who sought answers. Relieved, Nami responded, Oh, so you're the villagers? I think some of the pirate crew are still here. If you want us to tell you, then there isn't anything much left to tell you. The villagers, upon discovering their chief, Boodle, rushed to his side, exclaiming in alarm, Chief! Goodness gracious! Please get up! Damn it! What the hell happened here? It's definitely the work of those pirates! Apologizing casually, Luffy admitted, Sorry, I did that to the chief. The villagers, their anger flaring, prepared their weapons with murderous intent. Nami reprimanded Luffy, Hey! Why did you tell them that kind of thing on purpose? You saw me do it, right? Luffy confirmed, and Nami continued to press. I know, but still, that was because you had a good reason. The villagers, their spears aimed at the trio, declared in unison, All of you, how dare you do this to our chief? It doesn't matter what sort of excuse you give us. Who the hell are you? Could you be pirates? 
Nami's thoughts raced. If we didn't know any better and just said, we're thieves or we're pirates, then it'd be instant death. Despite her concerns, Luffy cheerfully confirmed to the villagers, we are pirates, further enraging them. Zoro burst into laughter while Nami berated Luffy as an idiot. But it's the truth, Luffy defended his statement. Grabbing Zoro, he called out to his crew, let's run away. The trio bolted, the angry villagers giving chase, vowing to exact revenge for their chief's assault. As they ran, Nami confronted Luffy, clutching her half of the treasure and questioned, why the hell did you make the situation complicated? With excitement, Luffy replied, this is a good village. Nami questioned him at first, but listened to what he had to say. For their chief, for just one person, they're all getting that mad. No matter what excuse we give, they'll still be mad at us. With determination, they turned sharply into a narrow alley, the villagers following in hot pursuit, as they exclaimed, they're running away through an alley. In the midst of their escape, they encountered Shushu, a white dog, blocking the path, barking at the villagers who sought to capture the pirates. Luffy and Nami exchanged surprised glances as the villagers demanded the dog move. Hey, Shushu, move out of the way quickly. Those guys are bad pirates. Why are you stopping us, Shushu? But Shushu kept on barking, proudly guarding the alleyway with newly patched bandages over him. The villagers grew increasingly agitated, shouting at the dog to move. Yet Shushu remained unwavering, barking in protest. Luffy smiled at the canine's loyalty as they continued their race toward the docks. Walking alongside Luffy, Nami expressed her relief. I was getting pretty worried. Thanks to Shushu, we barely got away. Why does it always end up this way? She pondered aloud. Luffy shrugged off the villagers' opinions, declaring, Who cares what they think? We did what we came to do. Well, it's not quite like that, she countered. Observing the two boats ahead, Luffy looked at the Nami's ship as he remarked, Is this your boat? Wow, it's cool. I envy you. Nami told him briefly, I don't think so. I stole it from a bunch of stupid pirates. As they approached the boat, three of Buggy's crew, from whom Nami had previously stolen the vessel, suddenly appeared on the scene. They laughed gleefully, taunting her. We have been waiting for you, thief. We knew you'd come back if we stayed here. I never dreamed that we'd see this boat again in this very harbor after you stole it. You won't be able to say that you've forgotten us. Puzzled by the encounter, Luffy turned to Nami and asked, You know them? Nami paused for a moment, memories flickering in her eyes, and replied, Sort of. Sort of? We have a long history, the three pirates exclaimed in unison. So you have a gang now? I guess we get to teach you all a lesson. The pirate trio hopped out of the ship, approaching the unconscious figure over Luffy's shoulder with derisive laughter. He then patted his face mockingly, taunting him. Stealing from others is such a terrible thing to do. Man, don't faint like a coward. Stupid. Hey, hold your face up properly. With a glare that sent shivers down their spines, Zoro lifted his head, and the three pirates, consumed by fear, fled in panic. They jumped into the sea and swam away as fast as they could, desperate to escape Zoro's wrath. At the heart of the town, amidst the chaos and destruction, a concerned villager noticed Mayor Boodle regaining consciousness. The townspeople gathered around him, relief evident in their voices. I'm so glad you're all right, they exclaimed. Just what on earth happened, chief? Boodle rose to his feet, his gaze falling upon the wreckage of the once vibrant pub. A wise old villager chimed in, adding, When we arrived, it was already like this. Did you see anything? The mayor was in disbelief, struggling to comprehend the events that had unfolded. Before he could collect his thoughts, another villager stepped forward, eager to share his account. Until just a while ago, these three weird guys were... Those kids... Were those kids still alive? Boodle interjected, his voice laced with anger. That idiot! Doing such a rude thing to an old guy like me, how dare he! The mayor's thoughts raced with fury. Attempting to calm the situation, the concerned villagers spoke up. Don't worry, we chased those idiots away, but I'm still pretty mad. It was like they were laughing at us. Those kids don't know how mad we are about the damage done to our village. We should probably go and catch those kids. Shut up! 
Boodle's voice boomed with anger. Only one person has the right to be mad at those kids. Only me. I won't forgive anyone who says anything bad about those kids other than me. The villagers were taken aback by the mayor's vehement defense of the troublemaking youngsters. They questioned him, why are you siding with those pirates, chief? Fueled by anger, Boodle discarded his leather body armor in a fit of frustration. Are those kids just going to disappear now? Did they go to the harbor? Yes, they confirmed. They ran off in the direction of the harbor. As the mayor hurriedly made his way towards the harbor, his armor was discarded without a care, revealing a yellow checkered shirt. Damn it! Coming into my village and messing around and then leaving without my permission. The number of things I have to say to you are piled like a mountain. Okay, let's go, Luffy declared with excitement. His crewmates, Zoro and Nami, followed closely behind, their eyes scanning the surroundings for any signs of trouble. Luffy pointed towards a flag fluttering atop a ship. Hey, that flag has Buggy's mark on it, he remarked. It was those pirates' boats, so of course it does. I'll erase it later, Nami replied. As they drew nearer to the harbor, a familiar face emerged from the crowd. It was Boodle, the mayor of the town they had just helped save from the clutches of the evil pirate buggy. He rushed towards them, stopping at the edge of the harbor as the pirates left the docks. I still have tons to say to you. Stop right there, you morons, Boodle shouted out. Luffy's gaze shifted towards the mayor, his eyes widening in surprise. Taking a moment to catch his breath, Boodle's mind wandered, contemplating the nearness of his own demise. I really thought it was okay for me to die at that time, he mused silently. In my despair, I considered death to be nothing. As the three pirates turned to face the mayor, Boodle's voice cracked with tearful remorse. I'm sorry, I owe you, he sobbed his gratitude pouring forth like a waterfall. They all smiled as Luffy's voice carried over the waters. Don't worry about it, just live happy lives, he called out. The mayor, his gaze fixed on the ship sailing into the horizon, spoke softly, overcome with emotion. I don't know how to express my gratitude, he told himself. As the boat sailed further away from the town, Nami suddenly panicked in disbelief. What? You left the treasure behind? I gave you half of it, didn't I? That's five million berries. Yeah, but since half of the village was destroyed, it will take some money to repair it, he explained calmly. That's my treasure, Nami shouted as she leaned forward, trying to push Luffy off the boat and into the sea. Stop it, I can't swim. If you want it so badly, go and take it back from them, Luffy exclaims with panic. With rage burning in her eyes, Nami continued to push against Luffy, his grip on the wooden boat their only barrier. How could I do that? If you ever do that again, you're dead, she threatened. Despite the commotion, Zoro couldn't help but laugh. Nami's anger momentarily dissolved into a fond smile as she playfully called Luffy an idiot. What? You're laughing? Luffy questioned, confused by the sudden shift in Nami's mood. But before he could say another word, Nami swiftly bonked him on the head, silencing him. Shut up! It doesn't hurt, Luffy called out. Their new companion, Nami the Thief, has joined the journey and the two boats continue sailing on the sea. But they don't know that on the next island they land at, the forest judgment awaits. <laughs>